Hey everybody. Fat Bird Finds here. I'm Mary Beth behind yeah. the camera or behind the computer. <laughs> the voice from The above. voice. I am Oz. Oh my god. <laughs> of course you are. I'm Laura. I'm Nikki. And we're doing a murder mystery. <laughs> oh, there she is. What's up? <laughs> it's very exciting. So I'm going to be running the cameras over here and then I'm just going to like hop back and forth, I think. Okay. To kind of come help you guys. Okay. But I was trying to pull mine up with no sound for the chat so ah, I could see the chat. That's mm-hmm. a good idea. So, yeah, we're going to be depending a lot on our chat for sure. Uh, but I did just want to pop over and say hi because I am here. I'm just a couple feet away. You just can't see me. But, uh, yeah, we're going to get into it in just a, uh, just a second. Yeah. <laughs> Well, it's, I got a commercial here for vertical it's, light. It's uh, really weird because we can't, Laura and I can't see ourselves because we don't have the computer screen in front of us. So I'm just guessing. I'm just guessing. Yeah. So we got lots of people in the chat already. <laughs> oh, good. Um, so let me just show you guys briefly what the views are going to look like. So I've got three angles here. So the first one is going to be of us over there hanging out. Second angle is going to be overhead so that you guys can see the case files. There's Nikki's hand. Thanks, Nikki. Mm-hmm. And then the third view, um, I've got a screen pulled up here. So we've got uh, Laura and Nikki over in the corner. So you can see them while we're taking notes. Oh, that looks good. Yeah. So I'll be Mm -hmm. taking notes. Uh, We'll we'll write all of our clues here. And we are going to be depending on you guys a lot to help us. So Carrie, what do you mean you're going to fall asleep? We're like (laughs) seven hours earlier than we usually are. Maybe she's saying that we're boring. I think that's what she's saying. I think she's saying she can already tell that this really sucks. Yeah. Oh, my God. I think that's what she's saying as well. Uh So, Laura, are you excited? Yes. I need to go get my glasses. Of course. Why don't you say hi to some people in the chat? Okay. All right. I will. I'm sorry that I'm having to look at my phone, but that's the only way that I can see (laughs) that I can talk to people because Mary Beth got control of the computer. So, look who all's here. It's Perry and Holly Parker. And Ruthie. And there's Carrie and Irish girl Colleen. And Nettie. Hi, Nettie. And Tiger. Hi, Tiger. <laughs> Hi, Tiger. And let's see. Oh, and Amber Amy's here. Let's see. Let's go back a little bit. Trina Hansen and Karen Chase. Hi, Karen Chase. Hey, we- Weta and Weta. We're doing good. We got 56 people here. Nice. That's pretty good for like a Blue spur feather. of the moment. Hi, Blue Feather. Hey, Greg. And Leanne Doolin. Yay. We got lots of people here. Yeah, we're doing good. We're doing good. <laughs> Ruthie's <laughs> putting in the knives for the murder. Yes. We weren't <laughs> sure. We probably shouldn't say murder. Yeah, we weren't sure about murder. <laughs> you oh. know, because we didn't know if we should put it in the description or in the <laughs> in the title or what. Because I guess we, we need to say Red Rum. <laughs> Red rum. That would have been good. I was going to call it the unalived mur- uh, mystery. Yeah. Oh, yes, Carrie. It, it is prime nap time. I will give you that one. Yes. Feel free to, to nap right. all you want, Carrie. I'm just playing with you. So, Laura, why don't you uh, show us the case file uh, on the overhead? Okay. So, we're going to show you guys the case file on the overhead. We have... Um, like untaped it and unwound the the string there, but we've not looked at anything inside yet. So you can pull it down just a tad. Towards me? Yeah. yeah. Mile High Murder is okay. the name of the game. Uh, just give me a second to get used to this. <laughs> okay. All right. I should be used to it from my craft channel. So wait, turn it over. Let's look at the back okay. before you open it. All right. Okay. So, is there like a, is there like a, um, thing that, an overview or something that you can read? It's not super clear. We might have to change cameras after all. Oh, it's not super clear? Yeah. It's better, it's better when you put it closer. Okay, note to the detective. Marissa Hightower was murdered on an international flight from San Francisco to London. Oh my God, on the plane? (laughs) <laughs> on that flight were friends and acquaintances of Hightower, all headed to London to partake in a substantial inheritance from Oliver Fogelton, Hightower's ex-husband. Mm. Anyone could have committed this heinous crime. It's now up to you to solve this mile-high murder. Oh. In this file is all the evidence to help prove who committed the murder. Oh, my gosh. So, we've got... 
magazine articles, uh, the air marshal's notebook, uh, suspect sheets, uh, newspaper articles, evidence photos, and case evidence. Yikes. Yes. What if we can't do it? Look at all these characters. What if we fail? <laughs> <laughs> we can't fail. We have all kinds of help. We have all of our friends. That's true. That's true. It's not all up to us. Okay, so I'm going to yeah, put it... So... What? We just need to see more of the thing. It's hard to get it in in the... Yeah. In, in the camera. I'm wondering. I might see, need I to... I can't tell from here. Yeah. What's in the camera? I might need to change our camera after all because it's not super clear. I'm thinking. Because here's the thing, is you need to have the the camera closer so it can focus on the words, but you need to have it further away so you can see more of it, you know? So it's like a catch-22. So let's just see. Can you zoom in and out? I'm just going to go down closer and just kind of see what happens. Yeah. When you go down closer, it's going to probably be better to read, but still not great. Yeah, I may need to... We may need to back up and punt a little bit and maybe change cameras. I'm thinking. It well, was little Frank. <laughs> Murder solved. Little Frank did it. I mean, so when we hold it closer, yeah. if we want people to read something, we can hold it closer where they Yeah. For what they need to read. Okay. You guys keep talking. Mm -hmm. I'm I've got some ideas. <laughs> I've got some plans. Yeah, I guess it does make it a very small area. Okay, so I'm going to put the camera back on you guys. Okay. And you guys chat a little bit with our audience, and I'm going to figure out a different idea. I know, so Mile High Murder sounds kind of naughty, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> like we're joining the Mile High Club. <laughs> yeah. That's what somebody said. Oh, okay. Yes. Well, you never know. That might be part of the, <laughs> that might be part of the clues. <laughs> this sounds so fun. Yes, it will be as soon as we can get our setup correct. Mm -hmm. Just read it to us. Yeah, that's what we're going to probably end up doing. So let's see. I think that we can do like this close-up thing here. I mean, the way we are now, we can go ahead and show maybe the pictures of the characters so everybody can write down the characters. The I suspects. Between you guys real quick. I'm sure that's not all the... Don't mind me. I'm just the man behind the curtain. You're so the whiz. You think? Obviously not, or I would have had this done already. <laughs> well, you don't know until you try it. You don't know, like, if it's going to work or not until you see it in action. Okay, we don't need this anymore. Oh, my goodness. Here's Oliver. Oh, Oliver. What, you're, we're not showing this. Oh, you're not. You're not on the screen. <laughs> There's not even a camera anymore, Laura. I just took it down. <laughs> Well, I'm trying to... I'm not paying attention to what you're doing. <laughs> that was really funny. Okay, so if you're taking notes at home... They're not taking notes yet. They don't even know what they're taking notes about. Well, we you know whether or not they're going to take notes. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> they're getting a great close-up of your hairline. Great. And your scalp. Okay, I'm going to read the introduction. How about that? It says, you don't need to read it with me. You don't need to see it. I'll read it. To whom it may concern, following the death of Marissa Hightower aboard in... Uh, Nikki, how do you say this word? I don't know. I don't know what word that is. Okay. <laughs> it's A-M-E-U. A-M-E-U Air Flight? From San Francisco to London, after the plane had crossed over Greenland, the aircraft was diverted to Iceland. The body was removed and the flight continued on its intended destination. Icelandic authorities determined that Ms. Hightower did not die of natural causes and international forces were called in to conduct an investigation. <laughs> okay, put something down there. Let's see if we can get it in, this, in the shot. Oh, I'm looking at the ceiling. No wonder. Hold on. I gotta switch it. <laughs> that was real special. I 
I'm working on it, guys. The Sorry. air marshal aboard the AMU Air Flight retired as scheduled on the day of the return flight to the U.S. Well, how how convenient for him. Your assignment is to take the investigation, coordinating the information provided through all the international agencies. It, it, it was in there. No, I know. Okay. It's not wanting to work. Hold on, I'm working. Okay. All the investiga investigatory material collected has been included in this packet. We've got it all, folks. We've got all the evidence that they collected. You're not limited to the contents of this file, and you can use any object from the world around you that you think might help pin down the criminal. Mm -hmm. Like mo your phone, internet research, etc. Oh, okay. God. Okay, I think I got it. If you need more information about one of the suspects or witnesses during your investigation, check both the contents of this file, but as well as anything else you would find appropriate beyond the file. All right, I got you up now. Okay. And it says read this first. Oh, yeah, that's what we're doing. We're reading this first. Mm -hmm. So your instructions are consider the possible motive means and opportunity of all of the alleged suspects. In order to organize your case, we recommend you use the suspect evaluation form included with the file. If at some stage you do not know how to proceed with the case, refer... Sorry. I can't read all of your arms. How's that? Better. Okay. Refer to the misplaced files, which will give you hints on how to proceed. These files are located and it gives you the web address of that but don't you guys in the chat don't look up the answer <laughs> <laughs> don't ruin the fun yeah or <laughs> okay. else once all of your evidence is reviewed you must determine who committed the murder of marissa hightower along with the how when where and why once you and your detective unit have a unanimous decision go to the crime lab to enter your accusation the crime lab is and then they give you the address for the crime lab some detective teams become competitive and pursue different theories on the motive, means, and opportunity leading to different suspects. Mm -hmm. If you find yourself in a competitive team, then you each need to write down the solution separately on a piece of paper. The sleuth with the correct solution can celebrate with an international flight to an interesting destination at your own expense, of course. Of, of course. <laughs> I don't know a damn thing you just said. Oh. <laughs> I would have to reread all of that. Oh, you're one of those people. Nikki. Yeah. You have to read it for yourself. Well, well, I was I've been busy. <laughs> I haven't been paying attention. Yeah, it's my fault. I've been messing with the camera and stuff, so it's probably my fault. Okay, Laura, you summarize for us. What did you just read and what do we need to do? Well, it's just saying that the the case itself is a murder that occurred on a flight uh, an international flight. The air marshal was on the flight. So there's notes from the air marshal. And um, they had to land halfway through, like in Greenland or Iceland or something like that, and take the body off the plane. And we just have to figure out who did it. Okay. That's all we have to do. Is that all? Is that all the necessary information on this? Well, that, yeah, that's all that this said. And okay. then it gives us the places where we can look up later. Late, um, later, like, it didn't, I thought it might have said something like, we don't have all the information, or did it say that? Well, it says you don't have to limit yourself to the information that's in this packet. You okay. can Google something okay. or something. All that's right. What it said. So do we know it was a murder? Are they calling it a murder? We know that for sure? Yes. Okay. Because in the last one we did together, we were not sure it was a murder. We were trying to figure out if it was suicide or mm -hmm. a murder. Correct. But I guess we don't have to deal with that this time okay right okay okay so here we go guys essentially all you need to know is there's been a murder on an airplane mm -hmm. and we got to figure out who done it that's yeah. it that that's it so okay let's start going through so this stuff. shall we laura shall we start going through the case file do you think yeah i figure we should start with all the people because everything's gonna you know we, we've got to know who's who Trina says, don't you have to say the reason and how the murder happened? Yes. Yes. Is that in the instructions? Yeah. I mean, that's okay. just part of it. You have to say who did it, where, when, how. 
Where, when, and how. Okay. Yeah. Very good, Trina. Yes, Trina. Keep us on track. Okay. Okay, so, so... Let's take that out of the way. They are going through the case files. Look at that guy. Yeah. And he's got a newspaper article about him. There's some more newspaper articles. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. There's a will of Oliver Fogelton, who is... That's the guy. This guy. This is Oliver, and this is his will. Okay, so let's back up real quick. Mm-hmm. So do we know who has been murdered? The name of Hightower. the... Hightower. Per- Somebody Hightower. Okay. Is it a woman, Laura? Yes. Okay. What's the, what's her name? Marissa. Marissa Hightower but has dude, been murdered. This dude is dead. Like, he... They're all showing up to go over his will. He's the ex-husband. Okay. Oh. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I'm I'm putting a category that's like, what do we know? Mm-hmm. So I feel like things that we know are that she's been murdered. <laughs> I feel like that's all we know right now. Yeah. Hold on, just a second. But this this dude. Okay, everybody on the plane had something to do with this dude, Oliver Fogelton. They were all going to his will reading? Yes. Okay. And who is the ex-husband? Oliver Fogelton. Oliver... This douchebag. Fogelton. Mm-hmm. F-O-G-E-L-T-O-N? F-O-G-G-L-E-T-O-N. Is... Right now it's the split screen, so they, they're not... Mar- at yeah. Marissa's ex-husband. Mm-hmm. Who's okay. dead? Yeah, so those are the things that we know right now. Oh, look, they're really... You guys are good in the chat. Yeah. Well, have, they, have they solved it? No, but they're, do, they're doing real good. <laughs> they're helping each other out there. Okay. Um, they were all headed to London to partake in a substantial inheritance from Oliver. Um, and that's Marissa's ex-husband. Okay, mm-hmm. anyone could have committed the crime. You know, okay. And that's that's really all they told us on the back of the box. So we, can, we just have to start looking at the different people and who they are. Okay. Who they are to him. All right. Is there just a stack of the pictures of the people? I don't know yet, Laura. We will see. Here's another person. Maybe we should start sorting all of this. Here is... Those are articles. That's a map and the will. And here's another article. Something. Here is a map. Looks like that's going to be the flight path. Here's like a seating chart. That's going to be interesting. Oh, yeah, that's, that's crucial, I would think. Let's see. Some more pictures. <laughs> Ooh, here's evidence. Oh, look, she's dead on the toilet. Is that oh, her? Great. Oh, God. Is that her dead on the toilet? I don't know. We haven't seen all the pictures. <laughs> uh, deceased passenger in WC. Yes, that's what that is. Okay. So that's an important picture. Some evidence. This was in her seat. Some pretzels and... A glass. So she was found in her seat? No, she was found in the toilet. Oh. You see this? And then Amy says, flight to London, diverted to Iceland. Perry says, how do you know he's a douchebag, Nikki? Well, he just looks like it, Perry. So Marissa do we know if was... Oliver is even really dead? No, we don't. So she was found in the bathroom? Mm-hmm. It okay. looks like it. But there, there she is. There she is. That's the victim. Uh, mm-hmm. Here's another article. Oh, there's some more. What is this? This it's is... A, Carrie this says, is, do we know if Oliver re- is really dead? I know. That's what I just said. Oh. We don't know yet. I mean, we're... Sa- I mean, we don't know. Okay. <laughs> so, this is the notebook of the air marshal. And he has written a Netflix list. Oh. 
Hmm. What do all those movies have in common? Line of Duty, <laughs> Bodyguard, Broad Church, Luther, and Bridgerton. I bet this is a code. Oh. I bet you this is a riddle of some kind. Have we seen all of those? Oh, what is all that? This is... This is flights and he's writing no incident. That's a lot of detail. <laughs> mm-hmm. This flight has one incident. Marissa Hightower. Seat See, 15A found unconscious in portside toilet. Estimated time of death, eight hours into flight. Okay. Mary Beth, that's good. You can read it on there. That's good. Did you see uh, uh, Ruthie's comment? <laughs> mm, she she said, said, the toilet's my biggest fear. I told my husband he'd better move me before he calls 911. <laughs> <laughs> Being found on the toilet. That's hilarious. Mm-hmm. Uh, so Alicia Crystal was seated next to Hightower. Hmm. Uh, went to bathroom when she when she returned. Jamie Bledwell was in her seat. When she came back, he left. No words were exchanged. So this Bledwell fella was interested in talking to Hightower. It sounds like he jumped in that seat next to her when he had an opportunity. So okay, so we know that Jamie Bledwell. Mm-hmm sat next to Marissa when the passenger next to Marissa went to restroom. Mm -hmm. And Alicia Crystal is the passenger next to Marissa. We might need to know that in the future. Okay. We can do the seating chart once we've got everybody's, our list of all the people. Okay. Do you want me to stop reading these notes and I kind of think we just need and to, what was the to passenger's get a name? all the people. What was the passenger's name next to Marissa? Alicia Crystal? Oh my god. <laughs> oh, Aaron, Alicia Aaron. Crystal. Oh. Aaron's like, I knew Jamie would pop in there somehow. Ow. I don't think it's that Jamie. <laughs> we should have changed the names. <laughs> yeah, who found her? We don't know that yet. Oh, oh no, it said... Oh. Well, it sounded like the air marshal. Well, actually, I don't know. Okay. We don't know that yet. Okay. Is there anything in We're your... just trying to see all the people. Laura wants to see all the people. Yeah. I think you need a list of the people. Is there a list of people in there? Well, there's photographs. Okay, let's go through those. Okay. This is... Because I feel like if you put, Mary Beth, I feel like in the notes, if you just put each person's name, then you can put a little fact beside it whenever we find it. Like, this person was sitting next to her. Or okay. this person found her. Or, you know, that kind of thing. Okay. I like it. Okay. Karen said, I already know. I bet Jamie did it. Yeah. <laughs> Jamie definitely did it. <laughs> okay. So, the people. Mm-hmm. What's this guy's name? Robert Vogel. V O G E L. Mm hmm. What do we know about Robert, we if, know if anything? Nothing. Okay. This is Rafael Rodriguez. R A P H. I don't think it matters. It does. Okay. R A F A E L. And then his last name is R O D R I G U E S. I know okay. people are thrilled to listen to me spell. They are. Okay. This is Jacqueline Henry. Jacqueline Henry. Okay. Do you want me to spell? Well, I've spelled it the best I can. That's great. There's an I instead of a Y. I was watching this. Okay, and then this is Amy Ming. Okay. Here's Jamie Bledwell, the guy that got in the seat. That's something you can write next to his name. <laughs> okay. Con- oh, very good, Colleen. What did she say? Oh, they're just remembering facts. The Vogel was in Alicia Crystal's seat when she came back from the bathroom. N- Bledwell was. I think Bledwell was. Mm-hmm. Constance 
Laughlin. L-A-U-G-H-L-I-N. Okay, that is some other clue. Here's Marissa Hightower, who was dead in the toilet. Um, Katie Winterthorpe. Okay. Okay. And then Oliver Fogelton, who we know is the dead ex-husband. Supposedly dead. <laughs> He probably did it. He did it all along. He was hiding on that flight. <laughs> or okay. something. Is that all our people? That's all the photographs that... Oh, there might be more photographs in here, but that's all I've found so far. Okay. And then these are the case notes. This is a suspect interview. Another suspect interview. Lots of suspect interviews. Yeah. So we're going to put those there. This is a... Oh, somebody it's wrote a, on the back of a coaster. It's a coaster from the flight. And somebody has written... Oh, they're taking inventory of the property. Yes. The, the value of the estate. I think. Oh, and they're very excited about the total. There's an exclamation point. Donna wants you to know, Mary Beth, that Rodriguez is with an S and not a Z, if that matters. Okay. she said. I'll fix it. Um, he here's my takeaway from this little tidbit. I don't know what our fellow sleuths out there in the chat think. But notice how this person is, is converting the value from pounds to dollars. Mm. So this is an American person. Who, who is? is? Whoever wrote on this <laughs> okay. poster. I right. would say, I would say as an American person who's interested in the value of the estate. All right. Uh -huh. Karen's suggesting that maybe we compare the handwriting to the notes in the little TSA book just to see if it's the same person. Good idea. It doesn't look that way to me. What do you think? It looks different. Mm -hmm. I think it looks different. Uh -huh. Okay. Does the chat concur? I don't know. I'm yes. not reading the chat. <laughs> I know. I'm just. I'm just asking. Okay. All right. And then this is magazine article. Is that what that is? I think. Answer it. The Webb's question and answer resource. When someone dies on an airplane in the middle of the Atlantic, who's in charge? I wonder if this is something from someone's browser history. Yeah. Like one of the suspects, one of the people on the flight maybe looked this up, mm -hmm. which is suspicious. Very suspicious. Um, that looks, uh, I don't know, Scandinavian? Yeah, maybe so. It's a postcard. And they've written some notes here. And I think this handwriting is different from all the other ones. Oh, no, wait. The A's. No. Yeah. Here's a little interesting tidbit. Maybe this isn't important, but... You see the A in Alicia Crystal in the notebook? And then the A in Digital on the postcard? And the A in Attack on the postcard? They're... They seem to be the same. Hmm. Same type mm. of A's. I don't know if that's any kind of mystery. Maybe we're supposed to know that it's the same person writing both of these. Female, mid-70s, digital rigidity, dry mouth, no mouth odor, patchy red skin, heart attack, drug-induced. I guess whoever found the body was making those notes. Mm -hmm. Perry thinks it's a man's handwriting. Okay. And, an, and Amy says it's not the same. The A's aren't? No, no, that was before. Oh, that's, sorry. That's been there a long... Sorry. It's been there when she was talking about this. Sorry, okay. sorry. Yeah. No, it's okay. Um, yeah, I think it's the same. Okay. Interesting. And then... A toxicology report. There's a lot more stuff here. Okay. But no more pictures. Some more articles. Yeah, a lot of that. A lot of that extra stuff is 
cool. But sometimes you got to get like, I think you have to start with the interviews. Yeah. To let's really start, know what's happening. Let's start with some of the interviews, I think. Okay. Okay. Those were probably at the beginning, right? Yeah, they were here. Look, anything that has this. Okay. That's this whole stack, I think. Okay. All right. Do you want to put that under there so they can see it? I mean, yeah. I wish I could see right when I did that. If See, I can't tell what they can see. That's not good. Mm -hmm. Who's Huckleborn? Or whatever that says. Hornbuckle. I guess he's the uh, investigator. Okay. Is that better? Just put it down. Yeah. I think it needs to be up here. Because I think the camera lens is up here. Yeah, that's pretty good. Here, I can zoom in a little on my end. Camera effects. <laughs> Amy can already tell. Toxicology report said she was poisoned. Oh, did it? Mm hmm. Okay. Okay. Here's the interview. The DOJ says, state your name for the record. And this is Jacqueline Henri. How well did you know the victim? Marissa Hightower. And she says, I didn't. Okay. And the guy says, didn't you attend and even perform at the artist association meetings that she was president of? So that, so maybe we should write that down, that she was president of the artist association. Marissa was. Wait. Mar Marissa was the president? Mm-hmm. President of what? Artists Association? Mm-hmm. Jacqueline said, uh, he said, uh, when he asked her that, she said, yes, but you asked me how well I knew her, and I didn't know her well. Interviewer, did you tattoo a small castle on the back of her neck? And she says, I haven't done tattoos for decades. And he says, but did you do that one? Jacqueline says, I don't know. Maybe. Probably not. I'd have to see it. I've done lots of castle tattoos, men and women. Oh my God, that's really suspicious. Might have done a tattoo on Marissa. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I guess under Marissa, you should put, you know, that she has a castle tattoo on her neck. <laughs> First of all, I didn't go to most of the meetings other than the annual gala. Secondly, I already told you I didn't know her well and therefore have not spent very much time with her. And thirdly, are you suggesting that knowing her well would have been a reason to kill her? That Seems sus. Yeah, I'm going to say that <laughs> she's a little too defensive. <laughs> Way too defensive in interview. So, And the DOJ guy says, we're just looking for a reason anyone might want to see her dead. And Jacqueline says, I did not want her dead. I'm sorry she's dead. I don't know her well enough to mourn her death. And I don't know anybody else who had any reason to want her dead. Okay. Whoa. Dang. Yeah. She has an attitude. Calm down. <laughs> our um, our uh, interviewer oh. is a woman, by the way. Betty. Betty. Oh, okay. Sorry. I no, said no, it's okay. <laughs> Maybe on the next interview thing, we can take parts. Oh, that'll be good. Yeah. Okay. Um, the Belgian hippie Heidi says, artists always recognize their work, even if it was 20 years ago. Oh, good. Mm, good good, good yeah. thing, Heidi. Yeah. I agree. And it says, do we have any flight attendants here? Do airplanes have morgues? <laughs> <laughs> And Heidi says, I would love to get more info about the victim, like her age. Mm. Okay. We'll see what we can find. Okay. All right. Let's, uh... Um, yeah, we'll do the role play thing. That's a good idea. Mm-hmm. Let's go to... So can, what's the next thing that you guys have there? Well, uh, this might be Im interesting to go with next. It's the, um, medical examiner. The oh. examination of the body. Okay. Can Is that able to be seen? Yeah, yeah I'm looking at it right now. Okay, okay. Uh, so, let's see, time of death between 4 o'clock and 5 o'clock, I guess, in the morning. Yeah, that's a.m. Okay. Uh, location of death was airborne aboard that flight. Okay. Processes undertaken, trace analysis and toxicology. 
forensic biology, conventional, and DNA. Okay, whatever that means. Okay, here's the summary. Uh, the victim died of heart infarct infarction and respiratory failure as a result of oral ingestion of a highly toxic poison. Oh. oh. So people sitting around is majorly important. Yeah. Poison. People around her, yeah. Yeah, well, or anyone who had access to her food or drink, which could be flight attendants. What's heart infarction? I think that might be a heart attack. Yeah, I think okay. it is. I think it's mm-hmm. another word for a heart attack. But it for sure says she was poisoned? Yeah, it says uh, she was the poison hyoscine H Y O S C I N E, uh-huh. also known as scopolamine, was found in the stomach, small intestine, and other tissues associated with the alimentary tract. Are there any doctors out there <laughs> in the I don't chat? Know, somebody, can, somebody in the chat can Google that tox that that poison. Yeah, the poison, and I mean, I don't know what the alimentary tract is either. Even though we watch a lot of Grey's Anatomy, um. Okay. The crushed and powdered seeds used for the poisonous mixture most likely came from Datura straminomium, known as Jimson weed. An individual seed contains about 0.1 milligrams of atropine. And while the approximate fatal dose for an adult human is about 10 milligrams atropine, or between two to four milligrams scoplamine, the level in the victim's body exceeded Seven milligrams scoplamine. Carrie no. says, I'm sorry, can I just say something? Real quick? Sure. Carrie says scoplamine is used for motion sickness too in very small amounts. Oh. Well, that might be useful. That might be a good uh-huh. point because, you know, she might have taken that on the flight. So, what is scoplamine? Um, let's see. So, okay. The, can can the, you still see the paper with what I'm doing? I, yeah, let so, me bring it bigger. I, I don't care. I'm just... Yes, look. Okay. Okay. Good. All right. Um, there's a lot of information here to process. Okay. The, nothing in the toxicology suggested any form or drug usage by the victim, and there's no record of her in any of the drug or crime databases. Um, Butterfly Nurse Thrift says GI tract. Mm. Oh, okay. elementary. Oh, we do have a nurse. Nice. In the chat. Okay. <laughs> what? Greg says, y'all don't be Googling these poisons. You'll end up on the NSA And list. Yeah, we had that problem the last yeah, one we everybody's did. everybody's watching. No, well, the last one we did together, I didn't want to Google. Like, we yeah. were, there was a question about, what was the, what was that poison? It was something yeah. really common. Like, what is a common poison? Arsenic. Like, arsenic. Let's say it was arsenic. And I was Googling. I wanted to Google, how much arsenic does it take to kill somebody? <laughs> And I just knew that I shouldn't do that. <laughs> yeah. That's so, funny. yeah. Anyway. She probably misread the dosage and poisoned herself for motion sickness. Maybe. Maybe. See, there's that question that we had in the last time we played this was is it an accident or is it suicide or is it murder? Anyway. Butterfly Nurse says, Y'all are killing me. Why? What? What are we doing? Because <laughs> what are we doing? We're probably being really stupid about oh. like these drugs and things. Okay. All right. So, okay. So she had. She died from oral ingestion of this poison, which was found in the stomach, small intestine, and other tissues in her GI tract. It was from the crushed seeds of a plant known as Jimson weed. How do you spell that? J I M S O N. Heidi says, I know a thing or two about plants. Oh, Ooh, good, good. Good. Uh, died of ingestion of the poison. Uh huh. From, but I guess they know that the poison came from the seeds of this plant. And that... Uh, and our nurse says sco, sc, scopolamine, or whatever you were saying that. Sco, so, scopolamine is also in eye drops. Oh. And Carrie says, I know there's patches that have 0. 0.4 milligrams and you change them every 72 hours. Mm. Oh. Let me tell you, that stuff is nothing to, nothing to sneeze at. I've seen people overdose on that stuff, and it's like highly hallucinogenic and stuff. Oh, you've well, seen it? Well, yeah. Where? When we, went, when we went on the cruise, you know, they give you patches, motion sick patches. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if it's got that particular drug in it, but 
those motion sick patches, they gave Mally, Mally was little, they gave her a whole one and they shouldn't have. They should only have given her a half of one. Mm -hmm. And she like went delirious. Oh, God. Yeah. Well, so it's interesting to me that in the doctor's report here that um, they just assume that it came from the seeds of this Jimson weed, even though our friends in the chat are saying that you can get this, you know, for motion sickness or in eye drops and all kinds of other places. Okay. So how do they know that it came from a seed and not from some something she was prescribed? Like, okay, so I think that's interesting. Okay. Okay. Um, well, here's a journal article about scoplamine. I'm not going to get into that right now. Yeah, let's let's hold off on that yeah, one. Let's look for more interviews. More people, yeah. Wait, here's another examination. Uh, this is the same day as the other examination by a different doctor or the medical examiner. Uh, this was an examination of items belonging to or used by Marissa Hightower. Okay. So, items gathered by Air Marshal Nick Peterson. Write down Nick Peterson as the Air Marshal. From the seating area of victim Marissa Hightower were examined for traces of poison once Miss Hightower was found to have died from scoplamine poisoning. Nothing was found on or in the magazine, headset, drink coaster, air sickness bag, serviette, lip balm, or bag of pretzels. However, the drinking glass had scoplamine mixed in. With the small amount of liquid remaining in the drink, Look in, you, in Ruthie, the bottom of the glass. Right. Ruthie said, I think they added it to her drink. Uh huh. As well as in a paste lining the inside of the glass. The, fur- the further down the interior part of the glass, the paste was less prevalent, indicating that the longer the paste was in contact with the alcoholic drink, the more it dissolved into the liquid. The only set of fingerprints found on the glass were those of the victim, Miss Hightower. In addition, Miss Hightower's fingerprints were found on all the other items mentioned above. The pretzels, drink coaster, and serviette also had the fingerprints of the air hostess, Constance Laughlin. Oh. She's the air hostess. Yeah. Okay, so hold, hold, hold on. Constance Laughlin is the air hostess. Mm-hmm. Fingerprints were on, on uh, Marissa's stuff. Yeah, some of the stuff. Not mm. all of it, but... Some of Marissa's. And then other items also had fingerprints belonging to Maud Williamson. Who that? She wasn't in our pictures, but she is one of the cleaning crew aboard the flight who were, who cleaned the flight, clean, cleaned the plane prior to the flight. What's her last name? Williamson. Okay, so they want to read her interview. So Maud Williamson is cleaning crew mm-hmm. and cleaned the plane before the flight. Yes, and her fingerprints were on the other items. So let's see what other items those were. So. Magazine, headset, drink, coaster, air sickness bag. I think it's just all that stuff that was in that picture. Yeah, that but... was in her seat. But some of those items, the pretzels, drink coaster, and serviette mm-hmm. had Constance's <laughs> yeah. fingerprints. And then the other items, it says, had Maude Williamson's. Yeah, you're right, Donna. What did she say? Air hostess would have, would have fingerprints if she served the drink. True. I mean, yeah. that's true. It's not... And the butterfly nurse says, I need a potty break, but I'm afraid to leave my drink unattended. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Okay, they want the interview with Constance Laughlin. Yeah, let's find the interview with Constance. Okay. Hmm. We've got it. Oh, you've already got it. Yeah, I was so- sorting through there. Okay, this is our air hostess. Yeah. You be whoever you want to be, Nikki. Who do you want to be? <laughs> oh, y'all are going to role yeah, play? We're going to role play it. Nice. I'll be the interviewer. Okay. Nikki's going to be the interviewer mm-hmm. and I'm going to be Constance Laughlin, the air hostess. Mm-hmm. <laughs> State your name for the record. Constance Laughlin. Did you know Marissa Hightower? No. I mean, <laughs> I would recognize her. She took lots of flights between San Francisco and London. That's good acting, Laura. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
you work as a flight attendant, correct? That's right. I've been with AMU since 2012 when I was 37. And you're not really in the art world. No, but I do meet artists in lots of professions in this job. So how did you meet Oliver Fogelton? Oliver? I just met him on his flights to and from the U.S. And those meetings were enough to get you mentioned in his will? Oh, gosh. oh. She's in the will. The flight attendant's in the will. <laughs> well, <laughs> I mean, I guess he was impressed with me or something. You, you, so you never went out with him? No. Never went to his house? No. Like I say, I saw him occasionally on a flight. I chatted with him. Maybe I made him feel good, but he was 40 years older than me, remember? I think he uh, took a liking to me. I don't know what else to tell you. Yeah, she made him feel good. <laughs> but you did go out with Robert Vogel. Yeah, well, him I flirted with. But we really didn't go out. I went to the book fair with him when he flew in for Mr. Fogelton's funeral. He's around my age, well-traveled, She's well flirty with who? Why not? Uh, Robert Vogel. I don't know if we have him okay. yet. I think he was in the pictures. Maybe, yeah. Um, and did you talk about Mr. Fogelton and his will? We must have mentioned it, but nothing in any detail. Mm. Mm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, Is that it? Yeah, that's it. So, I think Constance knows more about Oliver than she's letting on. Period. That's <laughs> Mary. We... That's Mary Beth's opinion. <laughs> I'm still voting that Oliver is not dead and that he's conspiring with Constance, his his flight attendant friend, to I don't know. Hi, Karen Gillette. <laughs> Do Welcome something. In claim his own estate. Erin yeah, says maybe sense. they put poison in her lip gloss. <laughs> yeah. Oh, look, Boo's up behind me on the chair. Yeah. He wanted to be involved. <laughs> he wants to be on he the show. Me. He's like Lucy. Okay. Here's an incident report from the TSA. Okay. Oh, wait. Hold on. Let me get the overhead. Don't I had I... to unplug my, my uh, stream deck <laughs> to plug up the other camera. <laughs> Donna says, did it state whether she's working the flight or a passenger on the flight? Um, it didn't say. But let's see. We've got the flight information. Maybe it'll say on there. Good question, Donna. Oh, that's the wrong thing. You know, like the seating chart and stuff? Maybe that says who the hostess is. I kind of thought that was in this stack, but now I don't think it is. Oh, here it is. Yeah, here it is. Um, the flight attendant was Con- Constance Laughlin. Here. I thought we knew that already. Somebody well, they were just pointing out if she knew Oliver, then maybe she was just a, a passenger on the plane that day yeah, instead she's, of the flight attendant. She's in the will, so you would think she would just be a passenger. Oh. But no, she was the flight attendant. It's interesting. Any age of the flight attendant? Yeah, she just said it in the interview. Yeah, she's, she said that she was 37 in 2012. And I, this happened in 21. Ruthie says, I think Oliver has many ex-girlfriends on the plane. Maybe. Mm-hmm. Boyd knows who it is. Who's Boyd? Okay. All right. All right. Um, there's just so much stuff. Are we ready for another interview? Yeah, let's do another interview. Okay. If you could, if you have one. Sorry. Here's James Ledwell. Hmm. This is the guy that was in the seat. Yeah, you want to go back and let let Mary Beth write down exactly what they said about him in the in the notes there in that. Um. Air Marshal's notes. I think that's what was on that page. Yeah. I mean, are you saying you want me to read the rest of it? Or just read... Well, I don't know if we... if I was just going to refresh our memory about what he said about him. He, he didn't say anything except that he was in the seat. When, okay. when Alicia Crystal went to the bathroom, uh, who was sitting next to Hightower, 
Jamie Bledwell was in her seat when she came back from the bathroom. All right, so let's back up. And then he left, and they did not exchange words. Okay, so Alicia Crystal Mm -hmm. was, hold on, sitting next to Marissa on the plane. Alicia got up to go to restroom. Uh-huh. And then Bledwell, uh-huh. Bledwell sat next to Marissa. No words were exchanged that we know of. Yes. I bet this is a red herring. <laughs> I bet it's supposed to throw us off into thinking that it's that Bledwell is suspicious, but maybe he was warning her. Oh. Maybe. He knows something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So we have the seating chart with for everybody. So I guess when it becomes necessary, we'll... Maybe we'll just look. Every time we do an interview, we'll see where they were sitting. So let's... Um, Irish Girl says, was anyone in seat 15B? Marissa was 15A. Alicia was 15C. Oh, it goes from put A that to... Up, put that under the... It goes from A to C. It doesn't... It doesn't have a 15B for whatever reason. Hmm. Yeah. Those are like first first class seats or something? Maybe so. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. She said okay. Okay. Let's do another interview. Okay. Okay. So this is James Bedwell. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, I'm, we'll keep our same parts. Okay. Oh, wait, so this is Bledwell. <laughs> yes. Let me find that on my notes I think we're, I think we're a little bit out of frame. Let's see. According to this. All right, Bledwell, ready. Okay. State your name for the record. James Bledwell. <laughs> <laughs> I was just trying to, I'm just trying to be You're, interesting. You're doing great, Lauren. Maybe you should lower your... Yeah. Your voice tone. James you Bledwell. Know, the pitch of your voice. Oh. Because you're a man. James Bedwell. <laughs> <laughs> How well did you know the victim, Marissa Hightower? Not too well. She hosts. I mean hosted the annual artist gathering and ran the council. And I ran into her at meetings and exhibitions. She would come into my gallery from time to time. Since I was always acquiring new stuff. Outside the art world, did you have any personal connection with her? Look, I had almost no real contact with her. She was a little old for me, you know. I don't know who knew her. I'm just a businessman. If you ask me, I just say follow the money. Oh. But according to the air marshal's notes, you did sit next to her for a time on the flight. No, I didn't. Oh. Oh, you mean when her seatmate left the seat and I went over for a few seconds? (laughs) <laughs> yeah. What did you talk about? <laughs> I don't know. I don't remember. Nothing important. Mm-hmm. What to do in the evening in the UK? What it felt like going back to the home she had lived in now that Fogelton was gone? What should I do with the new Monet I had acquired for him? You know, follow the Monet. <laughs> okay. So he's a smart ass. <laughs> Irish girl says, why are they all so pissy? <laughs> Because they're under know. investigation. <laughs> if I were under investigation, I'd be so cooperative and polite and not give anyone a reason to not like me. <laughs> okay, so what we know about Jamie is that he got into the seat next to Marissa, he didn't know her too well, ran into Melissa at meetings, exhibitions, and at his gallery, and that Jamie's a smart ass. Mm, <laughs> That's yeah. what we know about him. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, do you got another yeah. interview yeah, you want to yeah, do? Yeah. All right. We got another one? Yep. This is Amy Ming. Ming, okay. Now, Amy Ming was sitting... Like, almost right behind Marissa. She was sitting in the row behind. I guess that doesn't really matter. Yeah, we don't... We don't... We don't know... Okay. What we need to be 
thinking about, really. Well, All we really do know is that there was poison in her glass. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we need to be thinking about who has access to her glass. And, okay. All right. Uh, state your name for the record. Amy Ming. On the flight to England, you were sitting directly behind Marissa Hightower. Ah, there we go. Uh, in the next row, sort of at an angle. And you kept talking to her. Well, yeah, we had a conversation now and again. It was a long flight, you know. And what did you discuss? Stuff. <laughs> the flight. The food. How long she'll stay in England. Whether she inherited anything since she was Fogleton's ex-wife. Um... Oh. Well, you knew about the inheritance because you got the letter from the lawyer. Oh, yeah, that's right. Well, to answer your question, I knew her because she and I were both politically active in the 2010s, and then I briefly got to advise her on her investments. Unfortunately, she lost everything, all her cash, in the 2008 crash. Oh. I didn't ask you that question yet, but thanks for sharing. <laughs> Next question. Did you discuss Mr. Fogleton's will? No. She was getting what she was getting and the rest of us didn't know what we were getting. We were going there to pick things out. And you don't... You didn't talk about anything else on the plane before or after? Um, what else was there to talk about except that Fogleton was 86 and she, Marissa, married well... And I'm 82, and I hope I have more than four years left on this earth. And even though I'm very well off, I'm all alone. Oh, well, that's sad. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we know that Amy Ming is 82 years old and that she's alone. <laughs> yep. We know that uh, she was sitting sort of directly behind Marissa, talking mm -hmm. to her on the flight, just sort of small talk. Amy and Marissa were politically active, and we know that Marissa lost all of her money in a market crash. Mm -hmm. Do we know anything else? Did I, don't, I miss anything? I don't think so. Okay. Deb says, and no mention of Jamie being in the will also. Oh, yeah, but Amy had knowledge of the will or no? Um, yeah, well. Yeah, they all did. They, they got letters from the mm -hmm. lawyer, it says. Yeah, the interviewer says, well, you knew about the inheritance because you got a letter from the lawyer. But why would she get a letter from the lawyer? Well, I think that that's the part that we haven't really. Yeah. Or they're all on this flight because they're they're in they're the will. getting something. They're they and they all know that about each other. They're all going together. Okay. To, to get stuff out of the will. Okay. All right. I think we just read that on the back of the box, but mm -hmm. I guess it's in here somewhere. Okay. Okay. You could. Who could be an undercover bodyguard? Hmm, true. All right. This is Robert Vogel. Robert Vogel. Weta says, do we get to see the letter from the lawyer? It's a good point, Weta. Should Do you guys want to stop and look for that? See if the copy of the letter that goes out is in here anywhere? Yeah. Here it is, I think. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Good point, um, Weta. This is from Dagwood Dowd. Dagwood? Mm-hmm. He is the managing partner at this law firm. And... Okay, Trina, that's what we're, we're going to read that. It, it says, Dear Blank, I guess that because this went out to a bunch of different people. Uh, we regret to inform you of the passing of Oliver Fogleton of Saundersfoot Castle on Monday, March 1st, 2021. That's the tattoo castle. Oh. <laughs> oh. She has a tattoo yeah. of a castle on her neck. In his last will and testament, see attached copy, Mr. Fogleton has bequeathed you material goods that are part of his home in England. He has instructed this firm to issue you, issue you along with the other beneficiaries, a plane ticket and subsequent land transportation to enable you to be at Saundersfoot Castle to participate in the distribution. To that end, fully paid reservations have been made in your name for Tuesday, March, May 4th on AMU Air Flight, blah, 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 leaving San Francisco Airport at 1610, scheduled to arrive London Heathrow Wednesday morning 
1035. From there, you and the other beneficiaries will be driven by a chartered bus to bring you to Saundersfoot Castle, a trip of approximately four hours. Any purchases or other expenses during the flight or land travel must be borne by yourself. If you do not wish to claim this inheritance or are un unable to attend on the given day, for whatever reason, your entitlement will be forfeited. Okay, so this is just a generic letter, I think. They probably all yes. got this. Yeah, yeah. Do you have the attached copy yes. of, of the, the will. last will and testament? Yes. Well, the important note here that we've learned is that you don't get anything if you don't attend. Yeah. So if you get murdered, you can't show up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. All right. Here's the last will and testament. Okay. Um, I'll read this. Okay. I, Oliver Fogelton, being of sound mind and body, make the following request. To my dependable housekeeper, Katie Winter. Pull it down just a little. Like that? Down. Toward, toward you. Oh, I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah. There you go. You got it? Yeah. Okay. To my dependable housekeeper, Katie Winterthorpe. I think she's on your list. I leave all the monies in my current account at the Sa Saundersfoot branch of the South Wales Bank of England once the funds needed to pay off the execution of my estate have been withdrawn. I'm sorry to say, Mrs. Winterthorpe, that I have no safe deposit box or jewelry. I have no debts and I have no investments as I see that as gambling and I don't gamble. Mm. The monies in my savings account at the South Wales Bank of England are to be divided evenly between the committee to restore the Saundersfoot Railway, um, the, the 1829 project upgraded to a narrow gauge railway in 1874 to connect with the hamlet of Stepaside, and the initiative to build the Saundersfoot Pool, Billiards, and Pickleball Center. Pickleball! With swimming pool, billiard tables, and pickleball courts. Oh, God. Pickleball's made it to England. To Marissa Hightower, my former wife, and the only person other than myself to have inhabited said premises, I do hereby bequeath Saundersfoot Castle, my primary, actually my only, domicile. In the event she is unwilling to a, in willing, unwilling or unable to accept the inheritance, including the house and land, the same house and land is to be sold and the proceeds to be divided evenly among the beneficiaries. Oh, this is sketchy. I don't I don't like the way that's <laughs> written. He's like if it's if she is unwilling or unable. Uh -huh. I'm skeptical now of Oliver. Yes. Okay. He's not dead. The contents of the castle, including all the sculptures, paintings, and photographs, all of considerable value are to be evenly distributed among the following six people listed alphabetically according to the method of dispersal stipulated below. And it lists Jamie Bledwell, Jacqueline Henri, Constance Laughlin, Amy Ming, Raphael Rodriguez, and Robert Vogel. Okay, now push it up a little bit. Okay. The form of distribution will be conducted in the following manner. The executor of the estate will provide an airline ticket to each beneficiary to bring each to England at the same time and transfer each to the estate at the same time, whereupon each will select one item at a time from the contents of the castle going in sequential order based on age, the eldest choosing first. So we got to figure out everybody's ages. As Miss Laughlin works for an airline, MU Air, she may not require a ticket for passage and may even be able to assist in the travel arrangements. Mm. Interesting. So, it's all posted evenly among the beneficiaries. So, Marissa just got the building with nothing inside of it. True. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, so and let's... Carrie says, I told you. <laughs> all right, let's go to our notes for a second. Okay, I want you to read to me... Who all is on this will? Okay. So Marissa, obviously. Hold on. Let me write on hers in big letters that she is in the will. She is, well, she is in the will, but she's not with the other, with the six people. Willed the castle. Mm-hmm. Okay. Who else is on the list? Why do they have to be on the same flight? That's suspicious. Yeah. Jamie Bledwell. Okay. Hold on. Well, the housekeeper gets... Money. That's Katie Winterthorpe. Mm hmm Okay. She's not on the list of six people, though. Okay, so Jamie's in the will. Yeah. Okay, who else? Jacqueline Henri. Okay. 
Constance Laughlin, the air hostess. <laughs> okay. Amy Ming. Rafael Rodriguez. And Robert Vogel. You know, this, I mean, that's basically what they did. Like, they did that in my grandmother's, with my grandmother's estate. It started with the oldest, and you just picked one thing at a time, everybody there together. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now, who was the person at the top that got the inheritance, like, of the money? Katie Winterthorpe. I don't have her yet on my that's list. That's the housekeeper. Oh, yeah, I do. Okay, so Katie Winterthorpe is also sort of in the will um she was willed all the money all the money in one of his accounts um but she wouldn't have been on the flight right no i mean so basically hmm that's very suspicious i wonder why they have her on here because she really wouldn't even be of any consequence because she's not even on the plane Well, I guess we'll figure that out as we yep. go along. Okay, but Katie... Okay, Katie and Marissa were not willed anything inside, right? Right. So not eligible for any belongings. Lisa Day says, If the hostess helped make flight arrangements, could she have set people in certain seats? Yes. Yes. And, you know, everybody's so pissy. I wonder if it's like a group... So Constance, Same. Constant Constance, murder. Constance mm-hmm. had the opportunity to to seat people where she wanted them, maybe. Okay. 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 Do we have any more interviews, like from yeah. Robert Vogel? Yeah. Perhaps or Rafael Rodriguez. Yeah. Wait, here's Vogel. Yeah, that was the... I think I had it laying there, because so that would be the next one. Okay. Oh, wait. We already did that one. No? Nope, no. Nope. We didn't. And then we've got Robert... Ro- Rafael Rodriguez, too. Also. Okay. All right. Here's Robert Vogel. <clears throat> State your name for the record. Robert Vogel. <laughs> what was your relationship with Marissa Hightower? Well, I wouldn't call it a relationship. I met her years ago, and she told me about her husband or ex-husband in England, so I went over to meet him. Oh. Was she there? I don't remember. She might have been in Mr. Fogleton's house one of the times I visited there. I don't know. And what was your relationship with him? You mean Fogleton? I guess I became sort of his protege. He paid me, he, he paid for some of my schooling, and all I had to do was draw a portrait of him. Back to Mrs. Hightower. An unsigned note found on her desk addressed to Robert said, I thought we had an understanding. Now I see you were just using me. Oh. Can you tell me what she meant by that? <laughs> I have no idea what she could have meant or what she was talking about or what she was thinking. Besides, how do you know I was the Robert she meant? So you had no qualms with her? No arguments? We didn't know each other well enough to have arguments. And before you even ask, yes, I went out with Constance Laughlin once. Oh. Mm -hmm. We went to the London Book Fair. That's all. That was it. I only know her from airplane trips. (laughs) Why are you answering questions I haven't asked? And, (laughs) And why do you seem so nervous right now? I know you know my record, so you immediately think I must be guilty. My missteps were a long time ago. I haven't done anything. Wow. Okay, so my question is, he says, I met her years ago, and she told me about her husband, so I went over to meet him. Why? Yeah, I I thought I missed something. Why did he do that? I don't know. That's weird. I feel like that's strange. Very strange. Well, maybe they are in the same kind of business. Business. Yeah, like maybe she told him what her ex-husband was into, and he's into it too, and so they, I don't know. I guess it's so, art, art related, maybe? Um. Okay, so probably had a business relationship with Oliver. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Went out once with Constance. Was that her name? Yeah. Yeah. Constance, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, 
Yeah, because Constance said something about going to the London Book Fair with him or something. He offered that information. Oh, Irish Girl said he was an artist and Fogelton wanted a portrait. Ah. Mm. Uh, so that's why he went over there. He was an artist and Fogelton wanted a portrait painted. But Fogelton paid for his school. Mm hmm. Which seems fishy. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Maybe they had a relationship. Maybe, <laughs> Maybe they did. <laughs> On uh, any of these um, interviews, does it have like ages of these people? No. Sometimes they sneak it in there, though. Uh, also, you need to note that they talk about a letter that Marissa wrote addressed to Robert. Okay. And said, I thought we had an understanding. Now I see you were using me. Okay, so... It could be a different Robert, but <laughs> she wrote a letter to a Robert saying Sandra that... Sandra says Robert has a record. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and Robert has a record. Saying... Okay, what did the letter say? I thought we had an understanding. Now I see you were just using me. <laughs> love child Robert. <laughs> and then Heidi says a love triangle, possibly? Yes. Okay. Indeed, indeed, indeed. So we know about that letter, and we know that Robert has a record. Mm -hmm. Has a record of something. Mm -hmm. A shifty past. Yes. <laughs> Sh <laughs> shifty past. <laughs> I think we've got one interview left. Does that cover the six people? Is it Rafael Rodriguez? Yes. Good. Okay. Okay, here we go, you guys. Rafael Rodriguez. I think it's... Maybe one of the last people that of the interviews here. All right. State your name for the record. Rafael Rodriguez. You are not a citizen of the United States. Is that correct? I wish I could talk with an accent, but I can't. Yeah, I'm probably I don't do it. Don't try. Please. <laughs> <laughs> no, my father brought me here when I was a boy. I'm under DACA. DACA. The Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals. And I was granted special permission to travel to England for the meeting at Saundersfoot Castle. Yes, yeah, so we know about DACA. We're not immigration. It just explains why we have so little information about you. I came here when I was 12. I have been a good and productive person my whole life. I learned English and I will take the test soon to become a citizen. Came to America or England? America. That's very good. We wish you all the success America has to offer. We just want to ask you about your relationship with Marissa Hightower. She was a very nice person and very nice to me. She helped my father get his museum started and then helped me after he died. I tried to pay her back by being a good citizen, even though I'm not a citizen. We have a report from the air marshal that you were constantly getting up and leaving your seat during the flight to London. Is that right? It was my very first time flying. I was very nervous. I had to, you know, a lot. Oh. <laughs> and did you talk with Mrs. Hightower during the flight? A little. I told her it was nice that she told Mr. Fogelton about me. And now here I am flying to England. Huh. <laughs> These cops were the worst. Aaron said. <laughs> was that it? Yeah, that's it. That's what, look, that's what Aaron said. She goes, why don't they ask more details? These cops are the worst. I have like 17 more questions. I know. Yeah, really. For all these people. Yeah, really. I okay. think we should go to this next. <laughs> so, Raphael came to America when he was 12. Marissa helped Raphael's father start his museum. Tell me was that me. right? Yeah. Marissa helped Raphael's father? Um... Yeah, she helped my father get his museum started. Okay. And then helped me after he died. Okay. Raphael is constantly getting up with tummy trouble, and that's his first <laughs> flight ever. Tummy trouble. Deb says, I'm wondering if the air hostess is the dead guy's daughter. Oh. Oh. Yeah, maybe somebody here is a daughter. I don't know. And I, you know, I felt suspicious about 
that housekeeper who's not on the flight. Yeah, me too. Because yeah. she probably took care of him all his life. Well, she doesn't house. need to be on the flight, though, because she lives there, I guess. I know, but I'm yeah. saying her motive. Oh. I, I feel like she has motive to be pissed off and want more than whatever. Because he says, you get what's in my account, but I don't have a safety deposit box and I don't have any jewelry and I don't invest. So he's saying there's probably not much there. Like, I don't really have much to give you. Mm. But the castle and all the contents are going to these other people. And she's like, well, I, I've lived here and taken care of you all my life. All yeah. your life. Yeah, I'm I not- predict that one of these artist- articles is going to link the housekeeper to somebody mm-hmm. that could have done her dirty work for yeah, her. Yeah, I definitely think that there is there is some <laughs> conspiracy here, like between two or more of these people. Yeah. Yes. So why don't we just go and look at the screen together, everybody, and just kind of recap everything that we know so far. And Weta says, why did he apologize about no safety deposit box and jewelry, etc., to throw us off? I think he was saying, I'm sorry, I don't have more to give you. I, I think. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's just let's just recap everything that we know. All right, Robert Vogel. We know that he's in the will. He had a business relationship with Oliver. Oliver is the is the deceased ex-husband of Marissa. We know that Robert was an artist and that he and Oliver Fogelton and that Fogelton wanted a portrait painted. We know that Fogelton paid for Robert's schooling. Why? We don't really know why, but we know he did. Uh, he went out once with Constance. And he offered that information without being asked it. And he has a record. A record. So a he's. Record. So he's. He, what a racket. He has a record. See. <laughs> so he's shifty. Mm-hmm. All right. Now Rafael Rodriguez. That's the one we just read. He came to America when he was twelve. We're assuming maybe from Mexico or South America. We don't really know. Can I interject something here yeah. from a viewer? Yeah. Rebecca Barber says, "How did he get to America in the first place? Fly." Who, Rodriguez? Yeah. yeah. I guess he came across the border. I guess border. he just came across the border. Yeah. I guess. Okay. I'm, I'm assuming. I'm just reading for Rebecca. Maybe he's here. a liar. Maybe he is. That's what I'm saying. Okay. Da, da, da. <laughs> we know that Marissa <laughs> helped Raphael's father start his museum. Uh, Raphael constantly was getting up during the flight. He claims he had tummy trouble. And that was his first flight ever. Now we have Jacqueline Henry. Um, she's also in the will. Says that she does not know Marissa well. She might have done a tattoo on Marissa. I think that's sketchy. <laughs> it is really weird and she, sketchy. Yeah, she seems really defensive in the interview. And we're, I wrote a note like, whoa, calm down. She's like, <laughs> she's really agitated by the interview. Okay, Amy Ming, uh, 82 years old, alone, also in the will. She was sitting directly behind Marissa. Uh, was talking to Marissa on the flight. Just small talk. Amy and Marissa were politically active. We found out from Amy that Marissa lost all of her money in the market crash. And uh, Amy has some knowledge of the will. I don't think that we need to put that anymore, though, because now we figured out that all these people are in the same boat. Mm-hmm. Okay, and now we've got Jamie or James Bledwell, also in the will. Um, we know that Jamie got into the seat next to Marissa when uh, Marissa's seatmate got up. Said he didn't know her too well. Ran into uh, Marissa at meetings, exhibitions, and at his gallery. And we know that Jamie's a smartass, and he's got money on his mind. He's got my mind on my money. Money on my mind. Anyway. Mm -hmm. Constance. Constance, I feel like, might be sketch. Um, Constance is an air hostess. Fingerprints were on some of Marissa's belongings. Recognized. I get this right. When we when she was asked if she knew the victim, she said, "I would recognize her, but I didn't really know her. Um, not in the art world, but meets a lot of people who are." She was acquainted with Oliver, but she's in Oliver's will. She didn't really say how she was acquainted, but anyway, that seems sketch to me. But we found out that that. She went out with somebody. She went out with Robert Vogel, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I need to put this under her as well. Went out with Robert Vogel. 
And Oliver is 40 years older than Constance, flirty with Robert Vogel. Constance knows more about Oliver than she's letting on. That's what I think. And she had an opportunity to seat people where she wanted them. Maude Williamson. We don't know a lot about Maude except that she's on the cleaning, cleaning crew for the plane and that she had some fingerprints um, also found just on some normal flight stuff like the air sickness bags and pretzels and stuff like that, I think. Right. All right, Marissa. She's the, the deceased. Marissa Hightower, also in the will. She has been willed the castle. Um, she also has a tattoo of a castle on her neck. She is the ex-wife of Oliver Fogelton. She is the president of the Artists Association. She died of poisoning. We know that there were crushed or powdered seeds coming from a Jimson weed found uh, in the drinking glass. It had like a paste lining inside the glass. There were fingerprints. Only Mar Marissa's fingerprints were on the glass, right? Mm, I don't know. I think that I wrote that. I think maybe I'd have that's to true. Go back and read. I think that's true. Not eligible for any belongings in the will. Um, we know that Marissa wrote a letter to a Robert. We're assuming Robert Vogel, saying, "I thought we had an understanding. Now I know you're just using me." Katie Winterthorpe. Katie Winterthorpe. She was the uh, housekeeper. Yes. Housekeeper of the castle. Willed all the money in an account not on the flight and not eligible for any of the belongings inside the castle. Oliver Fogelton, supposedly dead, ex-husband. We assume that he's dead. And then we know that Nick Peterson is the air marshal. And the only other person that we have any information on is this Alicia Crystal. And we know that she was sitting next to Marissa on the plane. Uh, Alicia got up to go to the restroom and then Bloodwell sat next to Marissa. No words were exchanged that we know of. <laughs> Do we know anything else about Alicia or why she was on this flight? Yeah, look at your um, seating chart. Okay. Um. I'm reading the chat. Aaron says, wasn't this an episode of Murder, She Wrote? Maybe. But Heidi says, where does Jimson weed grow? Mexico? Mm. Somebody in the chat, Google that and see if you can find it. There's an article. There's there's some newspaper and magazine articles in here. In here, yeah. And one of them is about that plant, I think. So we'll read that. I've been sorting and arranging and categorizing what we've got here. I've got a, a pile of... This is like background. Yeah. Oh, 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 go ahead. You go ahead. Go mm -hmm. ahead. Okay. I was just going to say. Um, this is like background information on our suspects, mm -hmm. like not related to the case, but just kind of like articles about their careers and their prior arrests and um, things like that. So this is all background that we might look at. And okay. Then this is a pile of more details from the case from the incident okay let me read a few of these comments from our people first okay uh a name or amy says in the will it says oldest picks first so so far that's amy ming unless we find out the other ages as we go true mm -hmm. um why did jamie go out of his way uh to sit by someone he barely knows good point um and i like this comment by uh eclectic deb so Heidi was saying, where does Jimson weed grow? Mexico? Question mark. We don't know. Somebody can look that up, maybe. But Eclectic Deb says, could it be that Raphael had tummy trouble due to the same GI drug ingested by Marissa? Did he get some by accident due to adding it to her drink? Oh, interesting. Very oh, interesting. That's a good take. Very good take. I like that. Let's not forget about that. Uh-huh. I'm going to put that on my list. What are you laughing at? It just seems inappropriate that the, you know, one foreign person there was is going to be the culprit. Well, we don't know that. Okay. Could have tummy trouble due to ingesting some of the poison, question mark. And we're going to call that... 
Deb's opinion. <laughs> Jimson weed helps with stomach issues, though. Yeah, I've got... Uh, here's yeah. the... Um, here's this article on scoplamine, helpful or harmful, from the Science Journal. Okay. And... Um, I will, I'll just read that real quick since we're talking about it. Uh, scoplamine, like many poisons, has been employed effectively in medicines and in medical research. It has been used in Alzheimer's research primarily because of its marked amnes- amnesic effects. Its most common medicinal use is for the treatment of motion sickness. The application is an extremely low dosage administered through a patch. The drug, however, can also be injected or consumed orally. Also known as devil's breath, it can have severe negative consequences and has been associated with date rape oh, God. and other criminal activities where the intent is to render the victim helpless and later on unable to recall the identity of the perpetrators. Yikes. Scopolamine te- So maybe they didn't mean to kill her. Just date raper? <laughs> Somebody just wanted a date rape? No, never that, mind. That, that, that must have been <laughs> Jamie Bledwell. He, he was like, he roofied her. Oh, God. No, <laughs> no, no. Okay. Um, scopolamine, technically known as hyoscine, comes from the plant and is medically approved also for post-operative nausea and vomiting. The devil's breath drug is derived from the flower of the something shrub, shrub common throughout Colombia. Common wow. throughout Colombia. I, I hate to stereotype Mr. Rodriguez. Yes. I think they're throwing us off on purpose, but go ahead. Yeah, I mean, he's... Uh, oh, it's the cat. What? It, the cat. Well, he just hopped up in her lap. Oh, wait. Hold on. Let me show that. <laughs> That's a... <laughs> Laura, don't move. <laughs> I was just putting my hair in a ponytail. He just really wants to be involved. Uh-huh. He, really he really does. He wants to solve the mystery. He's interested. He's got opinions. <laughs> so I hate to stereotype Mr. Rodriguez because he has a Hispanic name to assume that he's from Colombia, where the plant is from. Okay. So so I, I don't want to go there. I'm not going to be the one to say that he might be Colombian because his name is Rodriguez. Um... <laughs> Okay, used in spiritual rituals for centuries. Oh, God. The seeds uh, extracted and powdered yield a chemical similar to scopolamine called burandanga. Scopolamine is also present in jimson weed, a plant found throughout the continental U.S. When scopolamine or devil's breath is combined with alcohol or other sedatives, it hastens a severe depression Mm. of, of the central nervous system. Common side effects include blurred vision, dilated pupils, and sleepiness, while a stronger dose can result in confusion, disorientation, excitability, and amnesia. An excessive dose of this odorless, colorless, and tasteless substance consumed orally can move lead, up a little. Can lead to a dangerously fast heart rate, toxic psychosis, seizures, coma, or even death within a few minutes from the time of ingestion. Interesting. Okay. So when you guys get a second, let's look at the wording on the will again. Deb says, uh, bottom line is everyone wants her dead because if she doesn't show up, the castle is sold and split between everyone, right? Right. So, yeah. I mean, everybody They're, has a motive here. It's like everybody's got a motive. Everybody's working together. But look, read what Aaron said. Okay. Where? Vintage philosopher. I'm telling you, his dad is the dead rich guy. Mom's the housekeeper. The, the Who's dad? I guess she's talking about the one from Mexico, the Rodriguez. You Okay, Aaron, are you saying that that Oliver is Raphael's dad? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> so, yeah, this says... Um, In the event that she is unwilling or unable to accept the inheritance, including the house, the the land, and the same, uh, is to be sold and the proceeds to be divided evenly among the beneficiaries listed below. Interesting. 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 Okay. All right. Okay. What else we got over there? Well... I have this weird web question that says, when someone dies on an airplane in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, who's in charge? 
Okay. I don't know why that's even in here or... But it's got to mean something. There's got to be one little piece in here that means something. Yeah, I wondered if somebody Googled that, but it doesn't say where that information came from. I'm going to I'm gonna read at the bottom. I'm going to skip to the bottom, and it says, In short, if the person airborne dies a natural death, his or her nationality would predominate. If the death is a crime and the perpetrator has been restrained during the flight, the place of landing principle might come into effect. If a crime were committed with no known perpetrator, the investigatory body might be the one in which the victim or predominant number of suspects resided, allowing, of course, that no parties are contesting jurisdiction. Okay. Yeah, I don't know why. That uh, that just may be to throw us off. I don't know that that's... Now, I will say, guys, that... You know, the last time that we did this, we didn't really get into the nitty gritty of the case until we started reading some of these articles. Yeah. So these articles, although they're lengthy, are going to probably tell us they have little, a lot of what we need to know. They're fun. They had little hidden hidden relationships and stuff in there. Specifically about uh, dude's shifty past, uh, Robert. We know that he has a shifty past, so I'm interested to know what his past looks like. Well, um... Let's let's go back to um, the, <laughs> what Brenda Bat. I just want to say that the air marshal sucks at his job. We yeah. don't we don't know that yet. We don't know that yet. Well, I can say that whoever did a lot of these interviews could have asked some better questions. Well, I don't think it was the air marshal. In fact, it was a bunch of different people. There were a bunch of different interviewers. I don't know why, but here's his notebook with his. It's got a bunch of notes in it. Okay. So I feel like I need to read through all this okay so are you gonna put it under yeah let me get closer because it's kind of okay so first of all there was this netflix list so wait let's let's not discount that netflix list yeah and does anybody know what any of those shows are about i do okay uh bridgerton is like that really famous romantic drama that takes place in a bunch of castles. Is there a murder? Uh, I don't think there's a murder in Bridgerton. Okay. Greg also makes a good point. He says, don't forget that Nick Peterson and Constance Laughlin likely spent a lot of time together on transatlantic flights. True. I think Broadchurch is like a drama that takes place in England. Okay. Um... Bodyguard, that's, isn't that the movie with Whitney Houston? And uh, I think Kevin so. Costner, where I think he's her so. bodyguard. And I don't know the other two. If anybody in the chat sees connections between these movies... Debs says that most of them are crime dramas in the UK. Mm. Broadchurch is a murder mystery. Okay. They're all cop detective type stories. Okay. okay. Will you wipe off that booed hair on the middle? Yeah, that's driving me insane. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> whatever, whatever. <laughs> okay, let's let's move on. You all be thinking about connections between those movies okay. or shows or whatever they are. Okay, next is uh, he wrote down some different flights um, on different days saying no incident. Oh, okay, so he's the, fl- the air marshal. So he's been on these flights, I assume. He's just keeping a log of... You know, the flights he was on with no incident. Mm. That's what I think. Amy Amy says that Bodyguard is a crime drama series that takes place in UK. Oh, oh okay. The question is, is this uh, the Air Marshal's personal watch list on Netflix? Or is he writing down uh, <laughs> some list of movies he saw from one of, like, on one of the suspect's phones? Or, you know, their devices? We don't know. Or... We don't know. Okay. Trina says we need to hear the backgrounds of the people, but I don't think they just spell them out for us anywhere. I think that's part of the mystery. these articles are about their backgrounds. Yeah. It's about their careers and their crimes and their arrests and things like that. That's what I mean. They don't, there's no, there's no, we're supposed to figure that out. There's no statement that says here's the background of the criminals. Yeah, no. We we have have to dig for it. Have to read the articles. We'll get to it, Trina, I promise. Okay, so here's the incident. Um... That he starts writing about on this flight. Marissa Hightower, seat 15A, found unconscious in portside toilet. Estimated time of death, eight hours. Push it up just a little. Into the flight. Nice. Okay. 
And then here's that business about Alicia Crystal who got up, went to the bathroom, and Jamie Bledwell was in her seat. And then next page. No words were exchanged. That's weird. I think th they're saying that no words were exchanged between Bledwell and Alicia Crystal when she came back to her seat and he oh. was in it. I don't think they exchanged words. Maybe. Okay. Uh, also said guy across aisle, Robert Vogel, in seat D, went over to talk to Hightower a few times. Since they are both on the aisle, she asked if he wanted to change seats with her, but he said no. She wanted to change because 16F was empty. Mm. We're, gonna, we're gonna need our Yeah, let's chart. look at our sheet. Um... 15F. She who? Alicia? Alicia Crystal? Well. Who was he talking about? Alicia Crystal went to... Ugh. Yeah, when she came back, he left. No words were exchanged. No, that's it. And then Alicia. also said, I don't know who, who said, also said guy across aisle, Robert Vogel in seat D... Let's see. Robert Vogel, 15D. Okay. And she was in 15C. Alicia Crystal. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, went over to talk to Hightower a few times. Since they are both mm. on the aisle, she asked if he mm. wanted to change seats with her, but he said no. She wanted to change because 16F was empty. Um... But this is interesting. 16F was empty. Um, over here, these are other passengers who are non-witnesses, no connection to victim, and they there was one in 16F. Mm. I don't know why that was empty all of a sudden. Yeah, so it wasn't actually empty. There just nobody was sitting in it. I guess. 16F is here in the middle. Okay. Okay. David Parletter, seat 16K, right side window, had his eye on Amy Ming, same row, seat C, catty corner behind How Hightower because he liked her laugh. Mm. Said Ming leaned forward to talk to Hightower a lot. When asked about a lot, said a few times, Mustafa Ahmed... Seat 17H next to Rodriguez, 17K. <laughs> Complained that Rodriguez, whose name he didn't did not know, kept leaving his seat to go to the bathroom and who knows where else. Oh. Said Rod Rodriguez sometimes went to bathroom on right, sometimes the one on the left. He asked Rodriguez if he wanted to switch seats since Rodriguez was always getting in and out, but response was he preferred the window. No one else noticed anything or said anything worth noting. That makes sense that he preferred the window if it's his first flight. I think so. Um, Lisa Day says maybe the poison was meant for someone else. Maybe. With all these seats situations. Yeah, that's interesting. Interesting, interesting. Meant for someone else. Okay. All right. Are we... Oh, no, never mind. Keep going. Let's start reading some background articles. Okay. Um... And if anybody wants to switch and let me switch out, and if anybody wants to run camera, whatever, I can read some stuff if anybody wants a break. I'm not saying y'all are doing a bad job. You're doing great. I appreciate that. Uh, okay, so this is stuff we've already gone through. This is, um, let's see. Um... This is just 16F was all over is what Amy said. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Hi, Katie Garnett. We're in the midst of this mystery here. I want to go through these things real quick. Okay. All right. While you're doing that, I'm just going to yeah, this browse whole, through this. This whole stack is back. Okay. Okay. 
this is more um, reports from the day of. Um, this is just. Can you pull it toward you? Yeah. Okay. This is a news article. I think the plane was diverted and landed in Iceland. Okay. I think we learned that somewhere. And this is the news article about it. Um, and I'll just kind of skim through it really fast. But the Icelandic medical examiner revealed this week that the body of a female victim from San Francisco to London was poisoned. Uh, the plane asked for permission to land at this airport early morning uh, after the plane changed course for Iceland and closest airport. <sighs> a feeling that they're making a lot of they're making a big deal about jurisdiction and like mm -hmm. where she was when she died like and where the plane was and who I don't know I feel like maybe that's I don't know what that means okay um dead on arrival Marissa Hightower uh taken to autopsy no sign of struggle or any injury and Two stewardesses who were questioned said that there had been no problems aboard the aircraft. Hightower was traveling alone, though appeared to know some of the other passengers. Medical examiner said her body contained an excessive amount of that poison, one which, strangely enough, is often used in very small doses to ward off air sickness. Forensic examination of the victim's drinking glass was found to be contaminated with the poison as well. Push it up a little. There you go. As the victim was American and the AMU flight originated from U.S. airport, at this point it is expected that the United States will have jurisdiction over the investigation. Okay. Okay. But I agree with you. They are making a big deal about jurisdiction here. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's to throw us off. I, I don't know. It doesn't seem like that's super important. I'm trying to think of in what circumstance it would care, it would matter who has jurisdiction. Right. Um. Irish girl, I don't know if we have Marissa's will or if Marissa had a will. We yes, it's in here. Oh. It's, it, Marissa um, did? Marissa had a will. It's in this pile. And okay. I'm, I'm getting to it. We're getting to it. Great. This is a press release from the Iceland Dick Pull Airport. Pull you a little. Okay. Keep going. Oh, that's in yeah, yeah, no, I was, something else. Yeah, it's translated. I guess that's in Icelandic. I guess so. Here's the English. A Boeing plane bound for London was diverted early this morning to our airport to drop off an unconscious body. Emergency medical personnel at the airport immediately declared the passenger DOA. Elderly female passenger, Marissa Hightower, flying from blah, 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 blah. So she's elderly. Yes. Okay. She was found locked in the toilet. Locked? Locked. Oh, I'm putting that in my notes. She was found locked in the toilet about eight hours into the flight. Airline crew could give no reason for her death, but said there were, were no altercations or other disturbances on board. A clear plastic bag that appeared to contain personal effects reported to have been collected by the air marshal on board was in the presence of the Icelandic medical examiner when he disembarked from the aircraft. Shortly thereafter, the flight continued on to its scheduled destination. The medical examiner is expected to perform an autopsy on the body later in the day. Okay. Okay, so if she's locked in the toilet, mm -hmm. don't you think that somebody would have to have the means to be able to do that? And the person that we know who has the most opportunity or means to do that is Constance being the flight attendant. Well, I'm sure it only locks from the inside. Correct. So why, why don't we just assume that Marissa well, locked it herself? Yeah, yeah, that or maybe somebody has the means to be able to do it. Well, I guess you're right. Maybe she was feeling sick from the poison and went in, locked the door. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's I'm true. Not liking that guy. Yeah, I guess that's true. Maybe I'm looking too much into yeah, it. Yeah, I guess they There's... made they made a point though that her personal effects were collected by the air marshal, and then the bag was in the possession of the Icelandic authorities. Okay. After that, I think it goes back to jurisdiction again. Yeah, I, that probably doesn't mean it, anything. This one says that it was locked. Also, this newspaper article yeah that probably doesn't mean anything i was probably you know mm -hmm. anyway here's the tsa report of the incident um let's see so at around 5 a.m local time iceland and the uk are in the same time zone flight attendant constance laughlin notice notified me of a passenger uh, this is the statement this statement is Recorded by the air marshal. 
but who, I guess it's his statement. Okay. Um, Flight attendant Constant Laughlin notified me of a passenger who was reported to have been in the lavatory for an excessive amount of time. The concern came from passenger Alicia Crystal, who had been sitting in seat 15C next to the person in question, Marissa Hightower, signed a 15A. There is no B in premium economy. I later thanked Miss Crystal for her clear action. Miss Laughlin had knocked on the lavatory door to see if the occupant required assistance but got no response. She summoned me so that I would be present when she or I opened the locked door. I had been sitting in business, so she went for the air marshal. Mm. And Heidi makes a good point. The locked door does mean that she died quickly. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, uh, Constance wanted the air marshal with her when she opened the door. So, that means to me that maybe she knew something was wrong in there. Maybe. Um, I had been sitting in business class seat 13A directly in front of Miss Hightower, but separated from her by a permanent barrier. Both seats were very close to the lavatory. Miss Laughlin knocked again loudly on the door and got no response. The emergency unlocking switch was in the door. The emergency unlocking switch was in the door. That's what this picture is. Mm-hmm. Mm. Oh, okay. Lavatory. Occupied vacant. Open the toilet door by lifting the lavatory sign and sliding the bolt to the right to release the lock. Okay. Okay, in case of emergency. All right. Um... Emergency and locking switch was in the door behind the lavatory sign. Miss Laughlin then released the locking me- mechanism and I slowly opened the door. The passenger, Miss Hightower, was sitting on the toilet seat lid with her head resting back, eyes closed and not moving. There was no bag and no personal effects anywhere to be seen. I entered. Pull it down. I entered. One more. Sorry. It's okay. How's that? Yep. Checked the victim without disturbing anything else in the room and determined that there was no breathing, no pulse, and no heartbeat. The only thing unusual I noticed was a tattoo of a castle on the back of her neck (laughs) and spittle at the corner of her mouth and on her dress. There was also vomitus on the sink. I knew she was dead, but regulations require that a medical professional must pronounce death, so it was not up to me to make that call. No doctor was shown on the passenger list. The state of the body meant the plane would have to be diverted to land at the closest airport. We had just passed over Greenland, which made Iceland the nearest place. During the public announcement about the diversion because of the condition of the passenger, the flight attendant also asked if a doctor was on board. While en route to Reykjavik, I gathered up and bagged all objects found at the seat of of the victim, 15A in premium economy, just to be certain that nothing that might be pertinent to her death would be overlooked. Miss Laughlin remained by the lavatory and, not moving Miss Hightower's body, relocked the door. The occupied sign kept passengers away without alarming anyone. The items I placed in the clear plastic bag included a magazine, headset, uh, air sickness bag, serviette, pretzel bag, lip moisturizer, drink coaster, and a drinking glass. I questioned some of the passengers in premium economy. Uh, but considering the time, it was the middle of the night, basically, only a few people were awake and had anything to say, but nothing that could shed any light on the incident. Just after 6 a.m., we landed in this airport outside Reykjavik, uh, in the center of the capital city, is uh, domestic flights, uh, medical examiner, an officer from someplace in Iceland, a representative from Interpol boarded the aircraft, Medical examiner pronounced her dead and her body was removed from the aircraft by members of an emergency response team. The police carefully examined the lavatory but found nothing that warranted further investigation. I did not disembark and after a short delay we were airborne again, arriving at our scheduled destination of London Heathrow Airport at around 20 minutes after 1 in the afternoon. Push it up. I took the return flight to San Francisco. My last assignment... My last assignment prior to retirement. Oh. That's interesting, I guess. All right. So what did we learn from that? Anything new? I don't... Perry points out, why was the point made to which bathroom she died in and Rodriguez went to use the left and right restroom? So he's... Perry's just saying that they're making a point to let us know which one. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
And then Rebecca says Constance wanted a witness. Yeah. Yeah. Constance wanted a witness or Constance knew that she was dead in there. Yeah. Or. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then this is just from the TSA, something about federal air marshals. And this, I think, has to do with jurisdiction again. Um, it's just like information about air marshals. Um, what was the coaster? Was there writing on the back of the coaster? Yeah, I think maybe this was her coaster. Because it says that they recovered her Up a co- little further. Her coaster. Okay. And it's uh, a listing of the value of the property cool, in the I house. Cool, you a little. Property in pounds to dollars. Mm-hmm. Uh, up a little. No. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. Oh, she's happy. Yeah. 2.5 to 3 million exclamation point. Yeah, I said that earlier. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um. So this is about jurisdiction, I think. Okay. So we're just going to set that aside because we don't know why we need to know about jurisdiction yet. And then here is her will that we've been trying to get to. All right. Everybody's been wanting to hear about uh, Marissa's will. So here we go. I think, yeah. To oh. whom it may concern. I think so too, Lisa Day. What did she say? Very unusual that it happened to be the air marshal's last flight before retirement. I agree. Hmm. Yeah. So this is from the department, or from the law, a law office to the Department of Justice... To whom it may concern, in response to your letter, this is to inform you that Miss Marissa Hightower did have a last will and testament. In summary, as to the disposition of her effects, all her cash holdings and the contents of her home were left to swords to plowshares. And the contents of her gallery, the building and her home were both rental properties, were left to Jamie Bloodwell. Oh, interesting. Okay... In her written statements, she says, as I am not married, have no children, and have no living relatives, I leave the material, paintings, other artwork, and documents in my gallery to Jamie Bloodwell, as he has done much to bring fresh art into our community and has been generous in his donations to the art association with which I have been long associated." And has been a regular supplier of fine artwork to my former husband in England. I'm sure Jamie will share his good fortune with the rest of the art community. Hmm. So what does that mean that her, all of her cash holdings are left to swords to plowshares? I guess that's the name of some organization. Okay. I wonder if there's anything about that in your There might be some in this uh, supporting documentation that Laura's looking at. I don't know. But then Jamie said earlier, and we're getting some of that in the chat, that Jamie says, hold on, let me bring up his, his, oh, this uh, is interesting. thing. Hold on just a second. In our notes, uh, we see that Jamie says, I didn't know her too well. I ran into her at meetings, exhibitions, and at his gallery. He's got money on his mind, and the, he was a real smartass in his interview. Um, and, and he sat next to Marissa when, uh, her seat partner got up. Why would he tell the cops he didn't know her too well? If she, I mean, well enough that she listed him in her will. Mm -hmm. Anyway. Let's, you want to read, you want a little piece of information about Jamie then? Yeah, let's hear it. Okay. Um. Tell me if I get this in the right spot for you to... Bring it toward you a little bit. There you go. Okay. This article is about Jamie. The art of investment. There are some who collect art and some who collect money. Jamie Bledwell says he collects art to make money. Without any formal training or he admits talent in art and painting, Bledwell sees art as a way to enrichment. Bledwell, owner of JB's Gallery in the Do Re Mi district, says he's is just a businessman. It's not the art itself that holds any interest for me. I'm lucky if I can tell the difference between a Picasso and a Parrish, but the potential for an increase in value that many works of art have. 
He says it's almost like owning stocks, only now I have something pretty to look at until it sells. And selling is the key word here. He doesn't buy something unless he can turn a profit relatively quickly. I've got some stuff on my gallery walls that I can't stand looking at, but someone else will see it, love it, pay me four times what I paid for it, and take it home with them, which leaves space on the wall for yet another business acquisition. Even if he doesn't have the artist's eye, he has enough of a business sense to know what to buy and the wherewithal to find out where to get it. I bet he does. <laughs> Ex- approximately half his stuff, he told us, is he picks up at flea markets and thrift stores. Us too! <laughs> Often oversized art that takes up too much of the previous owner's wall space. The other half he secures from dealers around the world, many of whom need to unload a piece quickly to get a much needed infusion of ready cash. Some art collectors just enjoy variety. I have one old guy who lives in a castle in England, and when he tires of something that's been on his wall for too long, he'll send it to me, and I'll sell it for more than twice the price of what I send back to him to replace it. He was ripping him off. He's a shyster. Jamie Bloodwell doesn't mind that he's not well-loved in the art community because he has no appreciable appreciation for art. There is respect for his business acumen, and the community enjoys his well-maintained gallery that showcases a continually changing array of fine art. And to help promote his business, he loans artwork to local stores and restaurants to display, dressing up their places a bit. He currently has a presentation of smaller paintings at City Lights Bookstore, where he often enjoys a good cup of coffee along with a good read. I have this old guy in England. Okay, so yeah. that's Oliver. He's talking about can, we, Oliver. can we bring up her will again? That letter? Yeah. Hold on. Weta says, that last letter seemed fake. Like a fake. This exactly. Art, this article is exactly opposite to what that letter says about his art interests. Exactly. So, in her letter, she's saying, uh, Jamie Bledwell, he's done so much to bring mm-hmm. fresh art to our community. He's been generous in his donations. Yeah. And been a regular supplier of fine art to my husband. I'm sure Jamie will share his good fortune with the rest of the art community. Uh-huh. We're, this no is way. two different versions <laughs> of this guy, right. for sure. Completely. So, that's interesting. Okay. Very interesting. Mm. There's a couple of little basic news articles about the death. You know, like where it, where it showed up in the newspaper. And then there's one about the wealthy housekeeper. Let me, let's go. Let, let's look at a couple more things real quick before we move on. I want to see the writing on the back of the coaster again. Some okay. other people want to see that. So we want to know: Is there anything else that Marissa has written personally? Can we look at that writing or or anybody else has written? I I don't have anything handwritten over here. Wasn't there something handwritten by somebody else? Yeah, I mean, I was looking at... um, Yeah, not that. The Air Marshals thing. This is is a postcard, I think, from Iceland. Okay. And it has... I think this is the Air Marshals notes. Yeah, I think so, too. Those are the only handwritten things we have? Yeah. Okay. All right, that's fine. I just wanted to... I think it's definitely different handwriting, um, but we don't know who wrote this. Somebody was speculating in the comments that maybe Jamie wrote this and not... uh, What's her name? Marissa. Yeah. But we do know that only Marissa's fingerprints were found on things along with uh, Constance and the airplane cleaner person. So Jamie's... What was her name, the airplane cleaner? Airplane cleaner person was, uh, just a second, let me find it, Kate Winterthorpe. Really? No, no, mm. no, 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 no. Sorry. Maude Williamson. Mm. Okay. Let's move on. All right. Can we, let, here's something really short that sort of ties everybody together. Maybe we can get some sort of clue from this. Oh, wait a second. Weta says, ooh, look at the S on the coaster. And signature on that fake letter. Oh. Well, she that's not her signature. Right. It's S.A. Gatlin Jr. I guess that's a, a lawyer. Mm-hmm. What are we looking at? The S's? Look at the S on the coaster. Yeah. It's similar. Mm-hmm. 
But we don't think well, this S. A. Gatlin Jr. person wasn't on the. I guess what she's flight. saying, what whoever is saying, is that whoever wrote on this coaster signed this letter, mm. like uh, forged to the signature. Oh. But we have no reason to believe that this letter didn't come from a law office. Like, that would be kind of a stretch. Like, how would they get the letterhead? Yeah. Let's not discount it, though. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. Good job, Weta. Let's just read this little tidbit. Okay. It's short while we're, while, while we're thinking about what else we want to look at. Pull it toward you just a little. All right. Okay. Event of the week. Local artists meet. The president of the Bay Area Association of Artists, Marissa Hightower... Announced today that B A A A, um, oh, that's the Bay Area Association of Artists, will have its annual holiday meeting on Friday, December the 18th at 7 p.m. at Lori's Diner on Sutter Street. The Nostalgia Lovers establishment serves a wide variety of fare in a kitschy dining room packed with 50s memorabilia. Many members of the Art Association, including gallery owners and painters, sculptors, portraits, Character, characters, I can't <laughs> say that, caricaturists and street mannequins are expected to overflow the, din- the diner in this yearly festive event. Jamie Bloodwell of JB's Gallery has donated a Kurosawa print for the auction and artist Robert Vogel has offered to do quick sketch portraits for guests for free. Rafael Rodriguez, owner of Museo Martinez, Martinez, hopes to repeat last year's win for best costume when he came dressed as a Toreador in an outfit drawn in the style of Mexican modernist Alfredo Ramos Martinez. Push it up a little. As always, it is hoped that Jacqueline Henri will be persuaded to entertain by singing songs in the style of Edith Plough. Tickets are free but limited and reservations are required. Okay, so all these people were at this event, probably. Yeah. Okay. They all hang out together. They do. Yeah. They know each other better than they're letting on. One of these little on. shitting articles is going to have just what we need. That's what happened yep. last time. Mm-hmm. Yep. Laura, don't say shitting article. <laughs> okay. You tell me what you want. Okay. We, we've got a couple of more articles like that. We've got a police report about Robert Vogel. Yeah, we've, that's what I'm saying. We've got a... I want to find. We've got, I want to find in that stuff that you've got there a, co- a connection between Maude Williamson, the the cleaning lady, mm-hmm. the for the flight. Yeah. And somebody else, anybody yeah. else. And yep. we need to know, like That's Heidi is saying, how does that flight attendant get in this guy's will? We still need to know that. Yeah, I guess. We've got an employee evaluation for Constance Laughlin. Okay, what is it? Her employee evaluation as an air hostess. Okay, let's have it. I don't know. That's... She's the she's the air oh person. <laughs> I need to know more about her. Okay. <laughs> look at the, look what this says. Okay, you tell me if you need to move up or pull down. it toward you a little. Okay. Okay. The first thing that jumps out at me at the bottom it says other comments. Sometimes Mrs. Laughlin spends Ms. Laughlin spends a little too much time with one customer instead of sharing her time more equitably. Oh. <laughs> Ms. Laughlin has already achieved a good level of professionalism in working with customers. Oh. They're saying not review not applicable on that one. She's a senior flight attendant. Okay. So she got she's got pretty good marks, I guess. Push it push it up a little. Up a little? Yeah. Other comments. Sometimes Miss Laughlin spends a little too much time with one customer instead of sharing her time more equ- equitably. E means excellent. There's no use. There's no unsatisfactory. Oh, she got a a S in the category of cooperation. Does the employee work well with coworkers, supervisors, and subordinates? What's an S mean? Satisfactory. Uh, it's no, it's okay. It's satisfactory. Huh. I mean, I that's know. that's not a bad review. Nope. Is there anything interesting? No, nope, not really, except for that other comment down there. Hmm. Uh-huh. I think we all know who that one person is. 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Amy Ming and Marissa Hightower were in some sort of riot together. Oh. Okay. There's an article about Rafael Rodriguez and his thing thing that he owns. Let's just probably back, pick some of those articles and just go through them. This one, I glanced at earlier, and it mentions the devil's breath in here. I think that was the drug they were doing oh. during the riot. Yeah, because one thing said recreational. Sometimes it's recreational. Okay. Mm-hmm. So this is um, like a police report. Oh. On Amy Ming, from Hang on. A, let me. Yeah, I'm gonna answer somebody's question in the chat, but you're gonna you can you go ahead with what you're doing, but I need this to do it. Okay. 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 Um, so this is several years ago. Amy Ming, um, suspect was detained and released following downtown riots after the Giants won the World Series. Yes. <laughs> Their first title since 54 records on file showed that Miss Ming was put on a watch list in 1953, even though she was only 15, on suspicion of having communist sympathies. Oh. In the 60s, she was active in liberal activism and gave low-cost workshops for women and minorities on entrepreneurialism and becoming independent in business while attending business school. In 2006, she opened a pottery shop where she made and sold her own work under the name of Ming Porcelain. A name she was forced to change after a court battle because of its provenance, even though the name was also her own. Amy Ming's great-grandparents entered the U.S. at the height of the California gold rush, but her grandparents returned to China after the Chinese Exclusion Act passed by Congress in 82, 1882. Her parents entered the U.S. <laughs> okay. Interesting. Wait, I thought I saw something. So there's a note at the very top. Handwritten note. Go down a little. You see it? Yeah. Our records show that Marissa Hightower was also detained and, and released during the riots after the Giants win. I thought there was something in here about the drug. That writing also has that same A, I think. No. It doesn't? Uh, they, wanted, they want us to go back and look at, on the employee evaluation, maybe, maybe we got a copy of that for her handwriting. For Constance's mm. handwriting. Oh, okay. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, let's look at that again. There's her signature at the bottom. That makes sense. Like, they're trying to throw you off with all the other information, but really, you're supposed to notice the handwriting. Okay, hold on just a second. I'm going to zoom in on that. <laughs> Brenda said, Amy Ming sounds like she'd be fun to hang out with. I bet yeah. she has great stories. Okay, so we've got the Constance's signature there barely um let's look at some let's look at that coaster again i think it's under here oh put it up there okay and then find me the letter the letter that was signed by the lawyer supposedly Allegedly. Yeah, okay, hold on. I think it might be under here. Okay. Mm. Oh, here's the reference to Devil's Breath in this piece. Okay. Okay, I don't... Mm, I don't know. I don't think it's the same. Okay. I don't think that whoever signed S.A. get... Gitlin mm-hmm. signed Constance's name. Okay, I think everybody's gonna like this. But oh, but <laughs> yeah, it's just mm, I just don't feel like it's. I don't think we can tell. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, let's try this this little piece of information here. San Francisco uh, Police Department. March 19th, 2008. Here's the date of birth for Robert Vogel, so we, you can get his age from that. Uh, March 20th, 1978. Mr. Vogel was confronted by police officers at the Tenderloin Bar and Grill on Eddy Street in response to a disorderly conduct call. The subject was intoxicated and appeared to be under the influence of an additional substance that was consistent with a drug overdose. He seemed confused and his speech was slurred. 
He was arrested and taken to the 41st precinct where an on-call physician noticed that his pupils were dilated. He had a rapid heartbeat, but a decreased breathing rate and a dry mouth. He complained of stomach pain and nausea. It was suspected that he had overdosed on devil's breath, a party drug that was not uncommon in the district and easy to get a hold of. Okay. As this is his second offense in the past three years for drug abuse and public intoxication, he will be arraigned and held overnight pending a judicial review of his situation with the possibility of incarceration. Okay, so what year did this uh, murder take place? The murder? Yeah. 21. Yep. 2021, mm-hmm. and he was born in 1978. So he's 43 years old. Mm-hmm. So I'm putting that in the thing here. And I just saw by accident here in this article, Katie Winterthorpe is 58. But I guess she's not in the lineup of who counts uh, for... Winterthorpe? Yeah, she's the housekeeper. Oh, never mind. She's not 58. She was a housekeeper for 58 years. Oh. <laughs> I sort of say she looks like an older 58. Mm-hmm. Okay. Never mind. Her age doesn't matter. She's not in the in the list of people to pick. Okay. All right. Let's see. Are we hanging on to viewers or are we just yeah. talking to ourselves? No, we've got viewers. Okay, we've got 86 people. Oh, good. Um, the Tenderloin of- earned its name from the widespread practice of police payoffs in the district that allowed police officers to eat luxurious tenderloin steak. Well. Um, uh, let's see. Irish girl, I'm, so, I'm concerned that Constance's fingerprints were not on Marissa's glass. Didn't Constance give Marissa the drink? Wait, true. Here's the report about that. Okay. Because I was thinking about fingerprints, too. Let's read that again. Um, okay. The only set of fingerprints found on the glass were Miss Hightower. Mm. That's true. That is true. In addition, Miss Hightower's fingerprints were on all the other items mentioned above. But the pretzels, drink coaster, which is that thing that we keep looking at with this information... The pretzels, drink coaster, and serviette also had the fingerprints of the air hostess, Constance Laughlin. And the other items had the fingerprints belonging to Maude Williamson, one of the cleaning crew. Yeah, I'm concerned as well that I, I'm, I'm, right now I'm leaning uh, Constance, but we could still be wrong. Let's read some more articles, some more stuffs. Okay. These are short newspaper articles. Do you want to do a couple of those? Yeah, let's do it. Just in case they got something in them. Yeah. You tell me how to position it. That looks pretty good. Okay. A London London flight diverted after a death. This is Thursday, May 6th, 2021. A Boeing 787 from San Francisco to London was diverted yesterday to Iceland after a passenger was found unconscious in the WC... The passenger, Marissa Hightower, an art dealer, was pronounced dead upon arrival at the airport outside of Reykjavik. There, are, there were no reports of difficulties ab- aboard the flight and no reason to believe foul play may have been involved. The, tri- the victim was traveling alone on her way to, meet, to a meeting to discuss the estate of her late ex-husband, whom she had divorced one deca- decade earlier. Auth- authorities have questioned other people on board who were also planning on attending that same meeting. The medical examiner in Iceland will make a determination of the cause of death, which is expected shortly. This marks the first time in more than a decade that a flight has been diverted from its path to London Heathrow to make an emergency landing in Iceland. Okay. I still don't know where all the Iceland stuff is coming in. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Then Death in the Clouds. Okay. Okay. Marissa Hightower, noted San Francisco art celebrity and gallery owner, died on Wednesday while on a flight from San Francisco to London to attend the disbursement of property from the estate of her former husband, who died in March. Oliver Fogelton, also a noted art expert and collector, met Mrs. H- Ms. Hightower on a trip to San Francisco in July of 69 while attending an auction of famous sculptures at the San Francisco Palladium. They married the following year in a private ceremony at the home of Mr. Fogelton, Saundersfoot Castle in Wales in the United Kingdom. The couple traveled back and forth between their two homes until the 80s when Miss Hightower decided to remain in the U.S. 
Mr. Fogelton chose not to leave his birth home in the UK. They continued traveling across the Atlantic, sometimes together, and stayed in touch even after their divorce in 2010. Marissa Hightower, born Marissa Tower in April 1943, changed her name after she opened her first art studio in 1965 when she was told she could not use her last name for the studio because of a conflict with a national record company of that name founded in 1960. Calling herself Hightower, she designed a logo of a pyramid-shaped skyscraper which now resembles the Transamerica Tower that opened seven years later. She developed a program called Indigent Art, making photography, posters, and prints of paintings available. <laughs> Continued on page eight. Maybe there's no continuation. Yo, oh, yeah. Low cost to a mostly local clientele. It's going to be hidden back here, guys, because nobody <laughs> turns it over and reads the back. <laughs> Though this nonprofit making course of action did not help her financial situation, it brought her positive accolades from the art community and helped increase sales of her established paintings and photography. Her gallery on Maiden Lane, not far from the Museum of Ice Cream, yes. is one of the oldest in the Yerba Buena district. The district name coming from the settlement of that later became San Francisco and a name of an aromatic herb predominant in the area. Often seen as a controversial figure, especially in an area of mixed political sentiments, Miss Hightower was not one to shy away from a good fight, and it was said she had many in, had as many enemies in the area as she had friends. Everybody agreed on her artistic value to the community, even if they didn't like her original avant-garde oil paintings. She bought from, sold to, and traded with many of the art dealers in the city, as she used her business acumen to help promote her own standing as a painter. In that arena, sadly, she was not as successful as she might have wished. Her holdings were modest, although no, though she was set to be the beneficiary of her former husband's estate, worth a considerable fortune. However, that godsend never came to be, as she died age 78 en route to England to claim her inheritance. She never remarried and had no children. Late news. This paper has just learned that the Icelandic Medical Examiner's Office, uh, NB, the plane on which Miss Hightower died, was diverted to Reykjavik, Iceland, has issued a preliminary statement that the art entrepreneur did not die of natural causes. Mm. Well, shoot, that did not have anything, and I thought that was going to have something. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Course, right? I mean, oh, they, yeah. they go on for a weird amount of time about things that don't matter, and it's maybe they're going to matter later on. Maybe. And here's the other just general newspaper article about it. Dead body on a plane. <laughs> Ruled murder. Oh, here's murder. Right? Yeah. The body of a passenger... Removed from a Boeing 787 en route to London's Heathrow Airport was found to have been poisoned, according to the report from the chief medical examiner in Iceland. The body has been identified as Marissa Hightower of San Francisco. The plane which left San Francisco Tuesday was diverted to Keflavik, Iceland's main international airport, when the body was discovered inside a locked loo on the large aircraft. There were no signs of a struggle, according to the report. And initial suspicions were that the death was a suicide. However, upon closer examination by the country's top forensic toxicologist during an autopsy in Iceland, the cause of death was determined to be from scopolamine, a drug commonly known as devil's breath, oh. and often associated with recreational use. The theory that the death was a suicide or accidental overdose was complicated by the amount of poison found in the victim's drinking glass, which had been recovered from the victim's passenger seat and examined by the forensic team. Investigation of the death has been turned over to the authorities in the United States since the victim was an American citizen. The plane was of American registry and most of its passengers and crew were Americans as well. Did we already know that the drug was commonly known as devil's breath? We already knew that. Mm -hmm. Okay, my bad. Yeah, that's... There was that article about the drug itself and then there was that uh, police report where I think it was Vogel yeah. was using the drug. Yeah, I think so. Uh -huh. I guess they're throwing us off with these nonsense articles on the back. I guess. <laughs> let's, let's do her. Okay. I'll read it if you want to break. Okay. 
<clears throat> this is our housekeeper, Katie Winterthorpe, who I suspect. I'm hoping that when we read this, we'll find some connection to Maud, the, the cleaner of mm-hmm. the, the plane cleaner. Uh, Katie Winterthorpe has been a resident of Saundersfoot all of her 58 years. You may have seen her around town getting her hair done at the Final Touch, buying grocery at Bramwell's or at the Saundersfoot Open Market, or picking up cleaning supplies. Of course, for 22 years, the ever young Winterthorpe has been the head housekeeper, that is to say, the only housekeeper at Sandersfoot Castle, the sole person to regularly go in and out of the iconic architectural wonder other than its owner, Mr. Oliver Fogelton himself. Sadly, Mr. Fogelton, at age 86, passed last week. Uh, leaving Miss Winterthorpe unemployed, but she won't have to apply for the dole. Word has it that she has been left a tidy sum of money, cash. My source tells me Fogelton left his estate and all his priceless artwork to friends and associates, as he had no family, and all his cash in the bank to his loyal and steady longtime housekeeper. Our reporter, well, that would be me, <laughs> asked Katie what she intended to do with all this newfound money. She said... After telling me how sad she was at Mr. Fogelton's departure and how much she liked and appreciated the kind man, well, the only house I'll ever clean from now on will be my own, and I might even hire someone else to do that. She also spoke of traveling, like going to Scotland and maybe to one of those Scandinavian countries where everyone speaks English. She said that now she might even buy a subscription to the Saundersfoot Gazette. Well, yeah, that's not super helpful either. No. Nothing is helpful. Yeah, we haven't found we haven't found our blazing our smoking gun. Our smoking gun, yeah. Yeah, they keep talking about this in the chat, this postcard that somebody picked up in Iceland too. I don't know. Okay, let's see it again. Let's see the front. Oh, this is the front. I assume that says... Welcome to Iceland? Yeah. (laughs) Okay. Flip it. Mid-70s. Digital rigidity. Dry mouth. No mouth odor. Patchy red skin. Heart attack. Drug induced. Interesting. Yeah. There are two flight attendants on this flight. Is there anything about the other one? Lisa Day wants to know. Not that I've seen. And do we have any cr- criminal history on Jamie? No. Okay. Raphael, this article is about Raphael Rodriguez talking about this beautiful garden of exotic plants that he has. Oh, let's hear about that. So weird. Yeah, let's 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 see about that. All right. Let me see how close I am to the being. aesthetic artistry of music. <laughs> no, that's not what that says. No, of Museo Martin. Martinez. Okay. Isn't that what you would say, Martinez? Yeah. Yeah. There are 80 museums around the world that feature the works of a single artist. In Europe, there are museums dedicated to Picasso, Dali, Magritte, Miro, Chagall, Monet. Others. (laughs) Yeah. Um, The detail just cracks me up. Let's see. And museums for George O'Keefe, Norman Rockwell, and Andy Warhol in the U.S., just to name a few. There's even an Andy Warhol Museum of Modern Art in somewhere, Slovakia. And San Francisco has its very own museum designed to showcase the work of just one painter, Alfredo Ramos Martinez. The Museo Martinez in the Mission District is a unique venue that houses the paintings and extraordinary and very large murals of this esteemed artist. Works were collected by the late Man- Manuel Rodriguez. So this is going to be his dad. Mm-hmm. And that's who Marissa helped build this gallery or open this gallery. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's right. 
Yes, an undocumented worker who opened the museum in 2010, driven by an unexplained passion for the works of this one artist, whom he was said to have known personally, or at least he knew Martinez's wife, Rodriguez from Portugal, hence the name ending in S rather than a Z, moved to Mexico where he married a local in Chiapas and was blessed with a son, Rafael. Rafael Rodriguez, whose mother died when he was still a preteen, crossed into the United States with his father, who continued north until he found a small house he could buy in San Francisco. Some years later, this became the Museo Martinez. After his father's death in 2014, Rafael, who had worked in the gallery while he studied art history, took over the running of the museum. The younger Rodriguez was successful in adding to his father's modest collection of Martinez prints while obtaining other works on loan from many other museums and private collections as far away as England. Hmm. Mm-hmm. I wonder who those came from. <laughs> mm-hmm. The Rodriguez father and son's love for the work of R- Ramos Martinez is understandable. Martinez is considered the father of Mexican modernism, known for his realistic and tranquil paintings of traditional Mexican people. His use of color and facial expression evoke a sense of familiarity and at the same time of wonder makes the viewer feel he's there in the scene, observing, unwinding. The Nicaraguan poet Ruben Dario once wrote, Ramo Martinez is one of those who paints poems he does not copy, he interprets. He understands how to express the sorrow of the fishermen and the melancholy of the village. Raphael lives upstairs above the museum in a small apartment decorated with all his treasures that are not for sale, including Sun Martinez paintings that are hung on his bedroom walls. When he is not in the museum personally serving customers, he has no paid staff. He's busy reading, studying, or tending to his garden where he grows exotic plants from Central and South America. During the November-December holiday season, the young entrepreneur will be serving traditional Mexican snacks. Uh, blah 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 to visitors in the gallery in late summer he offers grilled corn those who come to explore Museo Martinez are sure to be overwhelmed by the beauty of the art and also be delighted by the kindness hospitality and scholarship of the enterprising owner Rafael Rodriguez and this little thing says Martinez inspiration now grows in Rafael Rodriguez's garden hold on let's scoot that up this is important hold on let me find something here in my stack. <clears throat> Plants from South America. I know, right? Aha! The garden. Hold on. Can you see that? No. Oh, yeah. Oh, what's that? That's the scopolamine plant. Up. Uh-huh. It's the same plant. Yes. Devil's breath. Yes, it yeah. is. It's even the same picture. It's mm-hmm. the same picture of the plants. Mm-hmm. Okay. So that we would be sure to know it was the same plant. Can we just say it was him and be done? <laughs> well, okay. Let's uh, let's look at that little sheet that talks about opportunity and uh, motive and all that. This yellow sheet? Yeah. So let's just look at that real quick. Um... I'm going to zoom out a little um, down towards you, please. Okay, so if we if we want to talk about the suspect, and we'll talk about Raphael, um, he had the means because he was, obviously he has these plants in hand, mm-hmm. and he, he was gone back and forth to the bathroom a ton of times. So he had the means, I think, to deliver the poison and the opportunity but why? But does he have a motive? What's the motive other than uh, getting money for uh, for the estate? That that's really his only motive. And well, and she helped him and his father. You know, he doesn't have anything against her. Right. Well, motive in general is kind of a question here because because when she dies, all of the 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 property. The castle, the house, whatever. It's divided evenly among those beneficiaries. Yeah. Um, so none of them, all of them. Right. All of them have the same motive. So 
So I'm gonna I'm gonna pitch this out to our viewers. Okay, so when we're talking about Raphael, obviously he has the opportunity. He has the means. Um, but what is his motive? We haven't found anything yet to give us any indication that he would want Marissa to be dead other than being able to collect uh, some money on the estate. Yeah. That's it. Which is the same as everybody else. Right. So there's nothing more pressing than that as far as motive goes. I think it's too obvious. Yeah. Maybe what? he's a, maybe he is a he helped. I don't know. Maybe he helped to supply the murderer with the poison. I feel like okay. Yeah, I I agree. The tattoo is driving me nuts. It's mentioned <laughs> fifty thousand times, like in this article about Jacqueline Henri. Mm hmm. She's got her own gallery and stuff, and it just starts off. She started as a backroom tattoo artist mm-hmm. and etched her way to prominence as one of the most eminent artists of the Bay Area. But she just, I mean, something, and that's the only thing in this article. So something about the tattoo has to be. So, Deb, Marissa left Jamie Bledwell, uh, her, he, he was the, beneficiary in her will so jamie jamie has the most to gain from her death because not only would he be getting a portion of oliver's estate but he was also getting marissa's uh yeah estate is or you know her stuff as well yeah but i don't think she had a whole lot yeah maybe not Mm -hmm. maybe not but he he definitely has the most to gain but we don't know of any way that he has motive or means, right? Means or opportunity, and um, you know they mention um, Vogel. Yeah, Vogel's the one that has access to the drug, also because he's used it before, right? And um, he was he visited Vogel. He visited Vogelton a lot. In England. I don't know what that means. I'm yeah. just saying that he, I don't know, had okay. a close relationship with Fogelton. I don't know. This is so funny. Okay, here's a thought. I, I still think we're going to end up having to look up something. Okay. This article doesn't make any sense, but it's it, it just is saying that Jacqueline is a, now a portrait portrait artist or whatever. This portrait of an encounter. Who is this? Is this somebody that we know? Maybe? Are you showing it on the overhead? Oh, yeah. Oh, it looks like Jesus. <laughs> Hello, Nancy over there on Facebook. Welcome. I mean... Portrait of an encounter. I'm looking through our photographs. Can anybody look up... Can anybody Google portrait of an encounter and see if that's a real thing? He kind of looks like... He could be Robert Vogel. Okay, yeah. It does kind of look like that. See if there's anybody else. No, just Robert Vogel from the pictures that we have. Yeah, I can see that. Okay. We know that all these people know each other. Right. They just keep telling us that all these people interact with each other. They interact with the dead lady. Um, They're all in the same business. So we're really getting nowhere. I feel like we're missing something. Yeah, we're missing something big. We're missing the smoking gun. So the one... Hold on, guys. I'm trying to find the one who... Robert. Yeah, Robert. Okay. So Marissa wrote a letter to someone named Robert, who we assume is Robert Vogel. Mm -hmm. And it said, I thought we had an understanding. Now I know you're just using me. So we know that Marissa wrote a letter to a Robert saying this. Just so we know. Mm -hmm. And just to recap on Robert... He had the business relationship with Oliver, an artist. He did a, a portrait. Maybe 
is the portrait of of Oliver, do we think? No, Oliver is this this man. Okay, hold on. I've, I'm looking at ours. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Fogelton paid for Robert's schooling. Robert went out with Constance. They had a relationship. Like this article that Laura's looking at says that uh, Vogel was one of the only people to ever visit him in the in his castle or yeah. something. I, th- I think you're right, Colleen. I think that Constance is, is definitely up there as a suspect, for sure. Her, her fingerprints should definitely be on that glass. What you reading over there, Laura? Um... Yeah, this is from the Saunders Foot Times. Uh, it talks about his death. An iconic art collector dies. It mentions the housekeeper. It says she was there when he died. Mm-hmm. Which is interesting. Um, he died peacefully. Um, I thought he said the previously healthy elderly long-term resident died of natural causes. His longtime housekeeper, Katie Winterthorpe, was present at the time. It talks about him swapping out art pieces. You know how um, that Jamie Bedwell article talked about him getting paintings when people got tired of them from England? Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. So I guess that's supposed to tell us about that relationship. Here's what Nikki was talking about. It says... Other than Miss Hightower, who was herself an art aficionado, the only other art person to visit the castle more than once was American Robert Vogel, who became a protege of the master collector. Little is known about the relationships of Oliver Fogelton, just as not much is known about the man himself, other than his frequent trips abroad. Um, He did not partake in any town activities or celebrations. Ms. Winterthorpe his housekeeper said he was not a very talkative man, but was kind, friendly, and even generous. It says people can, you know, contribute to Saunders Foot Pool Billiards and Pickleball Center <laughs> initiative. Do we have anything about the organization that was listed in Marissa's will? Which organization? It was... Uh... Sword something. Sword something and... Swords and plowshares. Yeah. No, I haven't okay. seen We haven't seen else. any of that. Uh, Ruthie is saying maybe they sold fake art. Um, we still got a lot of Team uh, Constance people in the chat. And uh, double checking, do we have anything, any criminal history or additional information on Jamie? No, you would have it, Laura. Do you have anything? No, I'm I'm done. I just kind of went through everything. So, are you guys saying that we've read everything there is? Yes. <laughs> That's what I mean when I say something's got to be missing. Yeah, we're, we're, we're missing, missing something. <laughs> we are very much missing something. Huh. <clears throat> let me sit over there, Nikki, in your seat. Okay. You run the camera. Well, let me tell you what I've got here. Let me tell you what my my system is. Um, well, really, Tiger says Swords to Plowshares is a peace organization. Oh. Oh, yeah. I think Robert and Constance are lovers or co-murder planners. This is... All information we've already been through. No, I understand. I guess we've been through all of it now, so that doesn't matter. I was... Okay, Greg, I'm going to check that out. There's clues online. Maybe we need one clue to get going here. Yeah, here. This is the sheet that talks about that. Okay. I don't know how to run cameras. So, all you need to do is go between default, overhead, and screen. Okay. Okay. Do I have to click yeah, on the picture? click on the play. Yep. Okay. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. The screen has all of it together. Okay. Viewgames.com slash That's funny that they call them misplaced files. I think that's cute. <laughs> oh, are you looking stuff up? 
Well, I'm going to see if we need a hint. Oh, God. I've done something. <laughs> Page not found. That's not good. <laughs> I, I've i gotten off something and I need your help. I clicked on the sheet and now yeah. my screen has gone away. What button did you push to do that? F3. Okay. Select one misplaced file in order as shown below and see if the hint or clue there and helps you continue. Okay. Are you guys ready for a clue? <laughs> I think so. Laura looked up a clue. Oh my god, we already have this. I may have to look, do a different clue. Okay, here's this clue. Marissa Hightower had a tattoo of Saunders Foot Castle on her neck. Jacqueline Henri began her career as a tattoo artist. Maybe Marissa's tattoo was done by Jacqueline Henri, or maybe not. Maybe that's how they met. Maybe not. Would have been quite a coincidence, no. Don't try to read more into something than is really there. We knew that already. Right? What a racket. That's a racket. Well, I guess the question is, why is that relevant at all? Poison. They're going to tell us what we already know. I'm going to get a pencil. Okay. <laughs> Thank God for a pencil. <laughs> That'll help. <laughs> okay. Here's clue number two. The fact that Rafael Rodriguez grows exotic plants from Central and South America does not necessarily mean he grows the devil's breath plant from which poison can be extracted. But there's a picture of it. I know. In fact, the police report on Robert Vogel makes it clear that locals in San Francisco have unfettered access to the drug from the plant. Yes, we also agree with that. Yeah, we agree with that, you guys. Here's something um, on your list of notes that you made, Mary Beth. You said about Maude Williamson, who's the flight crew cleaning lady or whatever. Yeah. And her fingerprints were on normal flight stuff. Yeah. I don't know that that's true. Because I was, I've been trying to reread that report. Okay. Um, the, where they talk about the fingerprints that were on different things. And I feel like it says that her fingerprints were on everything else. It just kind of lumps everything together. Like... I think everything else also includes the lip balm. It wasn't just normal flight stuff. Okay. Like, I think if you look at the list of things that they found fingerprints on, I think Maude Williamson's fingerprints were on at least one or two things that I don't know that they should have been. Okay, so this says... Can you see that? Um, I don't know. Come on. Yes. I can see that. Items gathered by the air marshal. Nothing was found on or in the magazine, headset, drink coaster, air sickness bag, serviette, lip balm, or bag of pretzels. However, the drinking glass had the poison mixed in with the small amount of liquid remaining at the bottom of the glass, as well as in a paste. Blah, Only blah, set blah. of fingerprints found on the glass were those of the victim, Miss Hightower. In addition, Miss Hightower's fingerprints were found on all the other items mentioned above, so uh -huh. that makes sense. The pretzels, drink coaster, and serviette had the fingerprints of Constance. Mm -hmm. That makes sense because she would have handed her the pretzels, coaster, and I guess that's a napkin. And the other items, and the other items also had fingerprints belonging to Maude Williamson. The other items, which also includes, they mentioned up there, a lip balm or something. Right? Where's the lip? Up higher. Yeah. Lip balm. Lip balm. An air sickness bag. A headset. And magazine. 
So we, we know that uh, Constance's fingerprints were on the pretzels, the serviette, and the drink coaster. So Maud Williamson's fingerprints were on the other items. That includes the headset. That would include the air sickness bag and the lip balm. So all of that is normal flight stuff except for the lip balm. Yeah, I mean, it's the headset, the plane headset, like yeah, for the plane. Yeah, I assume so, but maybe and, not. Okay, yeah, the lip balm should not have had her fingerprints on it, if that's what they're saying. Yeah. If they're saying that her fingerprints were on that, then that is suspicious to me. Do we know anything else about No, Maud? she hasn't been mentioned anywhere else that I know of. Let's see what the chat says. Um... These clues are the worst clues I've ever seen in my life. They, they don't say anything. For example, the clue about the evidence bag just says, As for the assorted items the air marshal collected of Marissa Hightower's things, only one article is important, the glass. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Irish Girl's got a good point. Uh, Constance's fingerprints were on the pretzels, napkin, and the coaster, but not the glass. She wiped them off because it was the murder weapon. Uh, yeah, I think it is super suspicious that her fingerprints aren't on it. Mm -hmm. That means that she removed them. Mm-hmm. Unless somebody else handed Marissa the glass. Unless it was another passenger's glass that they gave to her or something. I don't know. I expected to find some sort of weird relationship between a couple of the people in, the, I know. in the depths of one of these articles. Mm -hmm. And that just did not happen. I know. And this just says, the very last clue, which is supposed to be the most helpful one, says, It's clear that everyone knew the victim, Marissa Hightower, in one way or another, be it a slight connection or a long-term association. What is not clear is the status of these relationships, including relationships among the suspects themselves. Was Miss Hightower involved with someone to some extent? We don't know. There are certainly no signs of a disgruntled lover or someone's need for revenge. For a perceived wrongdoing and no signs of any business deal gone wrong so maybe it's best to turn our attention to some motivation that goes beyond any relationship i just they all benefit equally from her death as far as the estate goes um uh bledwell i think gets her personal estate in her death which I guess is a motive more what is one more motive more is one motive more than everybody else has. You could say I still think that there's the the housekeeper, the Katie woman, that she could just be pissed that somebody else is getting the house that she's lived in all her life and that she's taken care of. Like she wants it for herself, even though she can't have it. She doesn't want anybody else to have it. I but guess. she wasn't even there. I know. <laughs> but maybe she uh, conspired with somebody. But it, we would it would be in the clues like that they had a relationship. That yeah. she had a relationship with somebody, but it's not. This is harder than the other one was. Yeah, the other one had a couple of very important smoking guns. Blue Feather thinks that hint is pushing us toward the political activism angle. Maybe. Um, Lisa Day thinks it was Jamie and that he switched glasses when he sat down for a few minutes to talk to her. Um, blue feather. Hmm. Yeah, Weta, I think Jamie does have the most to gain. You're right. 
Yeah. I mean, just a little bit more. Here's one more clue. It says, Hightower's last will. The last will and testament of Marissa Hightower was sent to officials on May 15th, the day after Jamie Bledwell's interview with authorities. There's nothing to indicate Bledwell knew he was the beneficiary of Hightower's art holdings, which, by the way, were not worth that much. Certainly not enough to kill for. Mm-hmm. Is anybody lying? That's how we solved the other one. We caught somebody in a lie that made us suspicious. Do we, right. Does anybody's story not add up? Um, but no well, one really has a story. That one guy said that he didn't know her, Jamie. Mm-hmm. I didn't know her that well. But she's he was in her will. Yeah. So that's suspicious. My bad. My phone's about to run out of battery. I gotta plug it in for a second. <laughs> I feel like we're gonna have to just look it up. Yeah. <laughs> because we have gone through all of this and there is nothing indicative of anybody. Not well, really. I'm, you guys let me know. I've got I've got the I haven't clicked on it yet, but I've got the link if we want to look it up. Ruthie says we should sleep on it. <laughs> you, you, you spoke this up. You're like, what if we can't figure it out? I did speak <laughs> it up. Man. All right, well, let's just go through the facts real quick before we give up. Let's just, let's just talk through it real quick. Can you do my, can you show this? What, the overhead? Yeah. Um, I think it is, yes, being shown. All right, so we've got Oliver, the dead guy. We've got Katie Winterthorpe, who is the housekeeper, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, so Katie... Motive could be that she wanted the castle, but she didn't really have the means or the opportunity. Right, unless she's working with someone else. Right. But she didn't, she wouldn't even, I don't know, it's a bad motive because she wouldn't get the castle. The castle would be sold. Did Marissa do it herself? Was it suicide? Probably not. I don't think so. Opportunity. Who had a chance to kill the victim? Is any particular person unaccounted for or has no alibi during the time the victim was killed? So Constance definitely had a motive, I think. Well, I mean, the motive was the money or the estate. Mm -hmm. Everybody's got that motive. Mm -hmm. She had the means... Well, she had the means by having the glass. Yeah. But we don't know that she had the poison. It's like she's working with somebody else. Right. Mm -hmm. She definitely had the opportunity. And she has an alibi, kind of, because she had... I don't know. Okay, let's go to Jamie. I've got, I've got all of her notes up on the screen. Like, so, um... Uh, went out with Robert Vogel. She has dated Robert Vogel, who we know had access to the drugs. Yes. Oh, yeah. Uh, she's flirty with Robert Vogel. She has the opportunity to seat people where she wanted them. Because she was put in charge of the flight arrangements. It was implied. True. Okay, Jamie Bloodwell had the most to gain. He did sit next to her, right? Um, yes. Well, he sat there for a minute. That wasn't his assigned seat. He took her... Well, that's not the means. That's the opportunity. He took her... Whatever, Crystal's seat or whoever was sitting next mm -hmm. to her took their seat when that girl went to the bathroom. But he didn't really have the means. 
He doesn't have the access to the poison. He doesn't really have the means. Right. Mm, yeah. And Katie didn't have the means or the opportunity. Mm-hmm. And then we've got Raphael. He definitely had the opportunity. He was up and down, going to the bathroom, all over, all over the plane. They um, said. hold on. They're saying they can't see something. Oh. I, I don't know what I've done here. I mean, I feel like they should be able to see it. I've just got... This is what they see. Yeah, that's what I thought. So they should be able to see it. Yeah, they let them see the whole thing. Okay. Okay. Raphael definitely had the means and the opportunity. He had access to the poison and was all over the plane. But I just don't see that he has the motive at all because he, she helped him and his family. He is an immigrant and she helped his dad make his, you know, open the museum. I just don't see the motive here. That's just me. I'm going to look at his article one more time while you're... I don't feel like Jacqueline has... I don't think we... I just don't feel like we know enough about either of these people to incriminate them. Yeah, I agree with that. <clears throat> Somebody said the maid could have been on the plane with a different name. <laughs> yeah. That's true. That's true. Are there any, like, anagrams? Like, are the names... Can the names be reshuffled? What about that darn Netflix list? Why is that in there? Yeah. Yeah, really. Okay, so our... Other economy passengers, non-witnesses, no connections to the victims, were here. Here's and where the body was found. There's a seat discrepancy of some sort, too. Who says that? Me. <laughs> what, what makes you it say that? It was one of the seats were supposedly yes. empty. Uh -huh. That's what I was thinking, too. Which one was it? 16F, I think, the one you're pointing at. 16F was supposedly empty, but we have no way of knowing who was supposed to be in it. So maybe Constance... Maybe Constance got somebody onto that flight who wa who wasn't supposed to be. Maybe the housekeeper was on the flight. And maybe they did it together. Maybe. But that's all very speculative. Mm-hmm. We don't have anything concrete here. Laura, we're missing something. We are missing something. Hmm. We sure don't know much about Alicia Crystal. That's right, Blue Feather. Yeah, we don't. That's true. Hmm. Okay. Do you want me to volunteer as tribute and like give find out what it is and give clues? Maybe. <laughs> or tell you who it's not? No, let's just do it together. Let's okay. just what do what together. Let's just go to the website here together. I'll pull it up so everybody can see it. Because if you start, look here. Let me just show you something. Here's all those silly clues. Yeah, I know. What's the website called? Universitygames.com. And then do you have to put in a code or something? I don't think so. Well, how did you get there? I googled ints for uh what's it called? Mile High? Mm -hmm. Mile High Murder. Okay. These were the clues, right? Yeah, we've already gone through all those. 
So where do you, where is it that you go when you're ready to guess? Keep going back. I, this is like solution is what you go to. Okay. Yeah. E each one. So like one by one, it'll tell you. Yeah, I know. How, how do you know? Because I did it on the other one. I remember. We've done this before. Remember? On the other one? You just guess person by person. I'm telling you, my guess is that somebody was in 16F. Okay. Um, somebody that we know nothing about. I think that they are involved, but I don't know who they are. Okay. Yeah, we got it, Greg. All right, so here we go. <laughs> we're, we're just gonna. We're we've brought up the page here where you guess. So Nikki, who do I think Constance is our best guess? If we're guessing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I guess these are our only choices that yeah. are up on the screen. So here's what happens is we, we click on a person and it tells us if we're right or not. Okay. So we're going to do it. We're, I, I feel stumped. Well, let, let's all make our guess. Let's all pick a person. Yeah, everybody in the, in the chat, pick your person. I'm going to go with... Pick your person in I the chat. I can't believe we don't have any more clues than this. I, I know. Mean, the other one was pretty easy. I feel like this one's been harder. Yeah. This one's harder because there's nothing that helpful. Yeah, true. <laughs> the other one was really clever because we caught somebody in a lie about their alibi. And right. And we found out that they had a, you know... I, I think it's going to be the um, air marshal. Oh. He's not one of the people. Oh, he is one of the people. Yeah. Nick Peterson's oh, on there. <laughs> Interesting. Because uh, I just think that's outlandish. And, like, nothing in here relates to anything. We've got a lot of Roberts, a lot of Constants, some Jamies. Everybody's split. Uh-huh. It's hard. I'm going with Robert Vogel. Really? Mm -hmm. What's your guess? I think the air marshal had like an affair with Constance. Or oh my something. gosh! Well, my guess that's, is Constance. That's really dumb, though. I don't. I, that's not what happened. My guess is Constance, but I think I saw probably the most Roberts. I you know what? That Nick Peterson, the air marshal. The reason none of this makes sense. The reason none of this makes sense is <laughs> wait. They he, can't see you. Oh, I thought. Hold I thought on. You had it all up together. Yeah, I did too. I do now. He has obscured this to yes. make it not make sense. He's the one responsible for all the reporting here yeah, for the I'm, most part. I'm the, sticking to that. The clothes but, gathering. And, but what does he have to gain? Nothing. I have no idea. <laughs> I'm sticking to it. He doesn't have any. There's no. <laughs> I think this is so terrible that we can't figure this out. There's that absolutely out. nothing that he has to gain that we know of. Yeah, that's true. Nothing to gain. Well, then just let's let's eliminate him first. Just click on him. But no. He, but he's the reason that we're so confused. <laughs> no. Okay, I'm going to... Nikki's me. leaving. I feel like... Everybody's split. I feel like everybody's very split. So, okay, let's do it. Let's click on the air marshal first. Okay. We're going to click on the air marshal first. That's Nick Peterson, correct? Right. All right, so we know that Nick Peterson is not guilty, so let's see what this says. <laughs> Come on now, tell us. What fantasy did you concoct about the relationship between the air marshal and the murdered passenger that would lead to her death? I suppose it could be an interesting idea if you figure the <laughs> official was in a position to hide or destroy evidence, but there's nothing yes. to suggest Air Marshal Peterson on the eve of retirement would have perpetuated such a crime. Perpetrated. Yeah. Perpetrated, sorry. When there do doesn't appear to be anything for him to gain. That's okay. exactly what I said. Okay. All right. All right. So let's go to who I think it is. Okay. Am I on or just you? It's, ju it's just the screen. Okay. Nobody can you see sure? you. Are sure? Oh, yeah. You actually, they can see you. <laughs> My bad. Let me get back in there, Laura. Oh. All Maybe right. Just both of us. I'm going to click on who I think it is, and I think it's Constance. Okay. Ready? Mm-hmm. Constance. 
All right, guys. She did it. Uh, it was constant. Here's well, what it that says. Seemed too obvious. I know. Yeah. Here's what it says. Uh, that's what happened to us last time. It seemed obvious. I'm sure Constance Laughlin would have would not have wanted Marissa Hightower to take her murder personally. <laughs> I mean, Miss Laughlin had nothing against Miss Hightower. It was simply a matter of mathematics. Remember, Miss Hightower scribbling on the back of her coaster. Okay, guys. One of you guys said that. Uh Mm -hmm. One of you guys said it was her handwriting. Well, no, it wasn't her handwriting. No, they're just saying. Oh, keep going. Sorry, sorry. Remember, Miss Hightower scribbling on the back of her coaster. She figured the house and property she was about to inherit would be worth between two and a half and three million dollars. Constant Constance Laughlin did the same figuring. 2.5 2.5 million minimum divided by six. All of the beneficiaries equals 616, 666, and 66 cents. Minimum, it could be worth well to be half a million dollars. How did how do we know that Constance did the same figuring? Do, are we just supposed to speculate that, or did we see it? Would you kill for that? She did. Constance Laughlin figured she would appear no more suspicious than any of the other guests, maybe even less so, since she had such a slight connection with the victim. Getting the poison wasn't a problem, nor was lining a glass with it that she would eventually give to Miss Hightower along with a few drops of additional poison just for good measure. What? Like she the didn't, eye drops or whatever. She didn't even have to kill her victim, just make her ill enough that she couldn't attend the necessary meeting at Saundersfoot Castle to claim her inheritance. Whoops, she overdid it. Now the host is flying in the skies, is confined to a cage. Guilty. But that doesn't make any sense. I agree. I don't feel like it's clear enough. Like, why... Wh- I mean, everybody would have realized the same thing. Hey, it's worth it to me to get this share of the inheritance. Yeah, everybody. I think that is lame. Yeah. Lame. Whoever made this game. Lame. I am so sorry that we subjected what? you all to this. What's the rest of the... I mean, we, we couldn't look ahead without ruining it for everybody, so it's, we can't be I expected. Think, <laughs> I, I don't feel like that was clear enough. The other one was crystal clear. Mm-hmm. When we what did they, it. So what are they going to say about Raphael? Let's see what they said about Raphael. Raphael. Raphael Rodriguez is probably the nicest murder suspect you would ever want to meet. Everything between him and Marissa Hightower was very positive, And he was very appreciative of the help of the older, the older woman gave to his father and later to him. There is nothing to connect him with anything negative. There was no... Smoking gun and all that damn paperwork. I agree. Something should have made Constance the person. Like, it, they should be telling us that, oh, in that, into that article, it said that Constance, you know, I guess what, knew how much the castle. I mean, what, what about the tattoo or the castle? Are they, and Deb says, are they saying the eye drops killed her? <laughs> I don't know. I think so. I guess. They don't even explain that. Can you read the epilogue? Yes. Oh. Okay. Did you figure it out? (laughs) No. Let me me, uh, put that on the screen for you guys. Did you figure it out? If not, or just to make sure, here's how the mystery comes together. The important thing to keep in mind is that not every mystery can be solved by a simple process of elimination. That's the truth. Excluding one suspect after another until there is only one left. And though most murders are committed by someone who has a strong relationship or connection to the victim, this doesn't always have to be the case. If the motive is financial gain, it's quite possible that the link between the killer and victim is only slight, if at all. The suspects in this case all have some connection with the late Oliver Fogelton and or maybe some connection with the victim. Fogelton's ex-wife, Marissa Hightower. Remember, the death of Fogelton is relevant only with the respect to the eight beneficiaries of his will. The housekeeper, Kate Winterthorpe, included, but not considered a suspect. Melissa Hightower... 
I think that means to say Marissa. Mm -hmm. Marissa Hightower was to receive the land and the castle with her death. According to the stipulations of the will, the estate was to be distributed evenly among the six suspects. So, to begin, we need to start with our MMO, means, motive, and opportunity. Means. Means the access to whatever it took to cause Marissa Hightower's death. In this case, poison. Fogelton's protege, Robert Vogel, was the only one who had a police record involving poison. That is to say drugs. But according to that police report, we know that the poison used was a common recreational drug in San Francisco to which everyone would have had easy access, especially in the arts world. Singling out Vogel would be like arresting only the butcher in a stabbing, stabbing investigation. Even though all were... All the other suspects would have the same knife in their kitchen drawer. Mind you, we're not saying he's innocent, only that all suspects, only that all the suspects had the means to obtain the murder weapon. Motive is where things get a little more personal. Sure, there were arguments over time between Marissa Hightower and some, not even all of the suspects, but nothing that endured or would seem like a likely motive for murder at this particular time. Revenge? Jealousy? Not likely. Murder for love, thrill, or concealment? That's when a person murders to cover up a crime. There's no evidence for those, for any of those. Keep in mind that all the suspects are just that, suspects, because they, they and only they, have one thing in common. The death of Marissa Hightower provides them with substantial financial gain. Can I just say something? Yes. That's that makes that means that is code for it was boring. They made no they made no association. They made it some rando person, really, that doesn't have anything to do with any of these stories or anything. You remember the last time that there was like somebody that was connected that you found out deep in one of the articles that had been kicked off of the of a of a movie set and and harmed irreparably and so mm-hmm. there was like a revenge kind of a thing. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's nothing interesting at all. I know that happened with her. I know. Even though all of the suspects get to choose objects of considerable value from the estate of Oliver Fogelton, they all became become considerably richer if they also get to divide the house and property five ways. If the beneficiary of said house and property is not available to claim her inheritance, much richer. The property has been estimated at blah, 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 blah. People have been killed for a lot less than that. The motive, quite simply, greed. Yeah, but they all have it. They I need, all have it. I need for them to get to the fucking point. I mean, if we're on a jury, I just don't feel like there's enough to convict somebody here. Like no. The only thing that convicts her beyond, uh, uh, besides all the other ones, all the other people, is the fact that her fingerprints are missing from the glass. Yeah. Is that it? Whoever killed Marissa Hightower knew he or she stood to gain an additional half a million, and it didn't matter that others benefited as well. Now it gets really difficult. If everybody stands to gain so much and so equally from the death of Marissa Hightower, and there doesn't appear to be any motive besides greed, nothing personal between any of the suspects and the victim, then every suspect is subject to the same suspicions. That brings us to opportunity. Time-wise, no one person had a better opportunity than anyone else to murder Miss Hightower before that fateful plane trip, since one-on-one contact with her was always limited, and anyone doing her harm when they were alone together would have no other suspects to deflect the accusing eyes. On the plane, however, every suspect had the same access to Marissa Hightower's drink to pour in a few drops of poison when no one was looking, and the killer would blend right in, looking no more suspicious than any other suspect. Right, which is what happened. (laughs) But the key is not the drops of poison added to the drink. It is the poison used to line the glass before the drink was poured. Consider the forensic report. Two things stand out. First... Poison not only found in the little bit of liquid in the bottom of the glass, it was also lining the glass in some sort of clear gelatin. Secondly, 
The only fingerprints found on the glass were those of the victim, Marissa Hightower herself. It would not have been particularly easy for someone to handle the glass, drop the poison in it, and then wipe off all the fingerprints before setting the glass back down on the victim's tray table without being seen. The glass had to have been prepared in advance, and then for good measure, drops of poison were added to the poison-lined liquid-filled glass. Can you see it? You can see it now, right? <laughs> I guess. The flight I mean, a- come on. The, the flight attendant, Constance Laughlin, had the opportunity to prepare the poison-filled glass ahead of time. Her mistake, besides being too greedy, was in wiping off her fingerprints before she served the glass to Miss Hightower, thinking she was removing evidence of her involvement. So we were really right on top of it. It was I too mean, easy. It's just ridiculous. What's happened here is it was yeah. obvious from the get-go, and we just thought that can't be right. Yeah. Right. When, in fact, her fingerprints should have been on the glass, as would be expected, since she was the server. Instead, she put the glass with no fingerprints onto a tray, which the victim then removed from the tray, applying her own fingerprints to the glass. Like with all other suspects, Constance Laughlin knew about Oliver Fogelton's will and its stipulations. The only difference was the flight attendant Constance Laughlin murdered a person she had never met outside an airplane just to greatly just to greatly increase her shared inheritance. So, blah, 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 blah. This is fine. Whatever. I, I just... I didn't mean to kill her. I just wanted to keep from getting her from getting to the castle. So, it's well, kind of... lame. It's kind of a racket because... It's a racket. We, we got... We had it. We had it like an hour in. Mm-hmm. We just thought it was too easy. Yeah, we thought there would have to be more um something more substantial. Something more substantial than oh, let I'm just going to get more money out of this. She didn't even know the girl. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I I'm saying if I were on a jury, I don't think I would be able to convict somebody with this you guys, yeah, you guys, that's a racket. The only thing that convicts Laura's her, pissed off. The only thing that convicts her is the absence of her fingerprints. I don't know that that is convictable. I know. To say the only evidence we have is that there is no evidence of her. Yeah. Uh-huh. Well, it was fun anyway. Hopefully, it was fun, guys. Miss Pam <coughs> is selling over on her channel. Yes. We didn't want to take up too much of Miss Pam's time, so. If you want to buy some good vintage, uh, head on over to Miss Pam's channel. And then I think uh, that Katie is selling later. So, I'm going to switch this over to us. Boom. Oh, my God. There we are. I hope you guys had fun. Hopefully. Hopefully you guys had fun. I hope you're not too mad at us. We had fun, for sure. There I am. Well, there we you really are. did solve it. I mean, you said we more did. than once that Constance was probably the person. Yeah. We did. It was. It's fine. Is it based on the true story? <laughs> I don't think so. But anyway, guys, thanks for solving the murder with us. Although we didn't really, we had to cheat to find out at the end. But but we really kind of did. Yeah, we just solved it really fast. Yeah, like, we just we're good jurors. We mm-hmm. we need more we concrete need, information to put somebody away. We need a bigger challenge. Yeah. <laughs> maybe we'll do this again yeah. one day. Yeah, we'll get a different one and do it again. Maybe. Thank you guys for helping us solve the murder. Go check out Miss Pam's sale. Um, Buy something good. Yeah, do that. And let's see, we'll probably see you live next Friday on Flipping and Sipping. Maybe Laura will put out a video this coming week. Vamp sale on Wednesday. Yeah, vamp sale on Wednesday. All right, guys, have an awesome rest of your weekend. Be sure to do something fun. I'm trying to find my button to send us off. Hope that you guys have a great night. Anything else? I think that's it. If you're not subscribed, hit that button. Hit that like button on your way out. And as always, make sure you stay tuned to see what Fatbird finds next. See you next time. Bye, everybody. Bye.